Wallop. Hello, you listen to Six Years with me, Russell Howard. That was not a few of the last junkie on earth by the Dandy Warhols. Do you like that? Yes. That's a cracking belt. Very good. Our uh, assistant producer, Adam, uh, is uh, good mates with the Dandy Warhols. And he's nodding behind the uh, the glass case. And went to a strip club with them the other day. And uh, he's been to many strip clubs and he loves them. He loves them lots. Um, so, how are you? Uh, I hope you're very well. It's New Year's Eve. Um, is everyone excited? Oh, yeah. Happy almost New Year. Happy almost New Year. Yeah, kind of right. almost. It's not very good though, is it? New Year's. It's one of those things you're supposed to kind of, you get really giddy about it and you think it's going to be amazing and then you sort of just wake up the next day, just everything's rubbish, everything's boring. I'm with you on that. The world's a disgrace. Oh, world's strongest man's on. And you get quite excited for a bit as you watch <laughs> a fat man put something on a plinth and then you get depressed again. John. Who might I add, listeners, has been in a foul mood. We've been here for an hour. Not do this every ha- morning. Having, we've been here for an hour, having a great time, having a hoot. I've been here for two hours. Get, well, that's your problem. Because I got here nice and early to read the papers. Yeah, exactly. So, right, what happens? We get in here at nine o'clock, and I like to sort of muck about, have a bit of fun. We were chatting about falling over in the bath. Exactly, and uh, that will you know. A little bit of fun for people. Yeah, a little bit of a hoot. Everyone having a smashing laugh, and John sits in the corner. Has now got so big for his radio boots that he won't talk to us until we go on air. Absolute cack. Not true. We have to put a red light on, then you'll talk. If I we were in a no brothel, it's five o'clock. I got up this morning. I have no interest in talking about falling over in the bath when I could be reading about the important news stories of our time. Okay, all right. Well, let's uh, let's reschedule this. Let's let's open with John's news hour. <laughs> well, what should we know about the world? Hey, you'll never guess who's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Although the uh, the conspiracy theories are going to be abound, aren't they? Because you mm. didn't actually see the uh, the uh, the hanging, did yeah, you? Yeah, what was that? If we're talking about the same person, you might have been on <laughs> a cat that you ran over. Yeah, but, no, uh, no cats about this. I saw a fox. Do you kill it? No, that's an impression there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Do you want to foxy fox? Because we should explain, John's come from the Glee Club in Birmingham uh, where you were doing a gig yesterday. Yep. And he got. Bef- I, I was going to sleep between the gig, but then I thought, no, I'll just listen to people being idiots around Birmingham all night, beeping car horns. And the two girls are in the room next to me, uh, if you're listening, in the holiday in Queensway, and you decide to giggle all night and then try and dupe me by singing Phantom of the Opera at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> as if that was going to make it okay that you were keeping me up. I hope you never sleep ever again. I'll be honest, I like them. I like the idea that they were giggling about falling over in the bath. You know, really getting into the, uh, the fun. What, so were you, were you listening? I about? banged on the wall and I heard one of them go, Corey's grumpy, in there, Four o'clock in the morning. So a Bristolian in Birmingham? Yeah. I think you were in there with <laughs> that Because been... there was a lot of noises for about 19 minutes and then one of them went very quiet. That would have been great, wouldn't it? No, I wasn't there. I'd have, so it was two ladies getting up to lady fun, do you think? I don't know how old they were. <laughs> well, you wouldn't. I was, trying, I was trying to place them. <laughs> That's fantastic. But I had a good mind to get out of bed, but I was only wearing oh. a little skimpy pair of boxer shorts, and oh, I'd have I had to have done it. get my key. There's something, was something about having to take my key with me that made it a pathetic gesture. If I could have stormed out and gone, what the blazers, and had a proper go at them, but the fact I would have had to plan to remember to take my key so I didn't get locked out of my room. But it's always that very awkward thing. When you're trying to administer a real telling off to someone and you're wearing pants, you, you, you're always aware that you, you, your penis is jiggling. And it's just difficult to give someone a thorough telling off when you can feel yourself waggling a bit, isn't it? Don't give me that look. That's Everyone's felt that. Don't kind of go, well, mine swings hither and dither. You know, it just jiggles. You can't. I remember our dad tried to tell us off once naked because me and my brother went through this phase of trying to get up really early in the morning um, to beat each other. It's like, we're about eight and that. And so and it, basically we got up at six, got up at five, and it ended up with us fully ready for, for school at like two in the morning. And our dad came in to tell us off, but he was naked. And you just, you know, he's like, why do you go to bed? And you kind of, well, we can't concentrate on anything other than you swinging winky. <laughs> I always put mine in kind of a stirrup if do I'm going well, to tell that, someone off. That's the wonderful thing about you, John. You plan ahead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I've got my stirrups on, you know you've done something wrong. <laughs> exactly. The other day I left uh, some cups and saucers up and he went upstairs. I thought, oh, stirrups are bound. Nothing makes you feel worse than being pointed at three ways by the same man. That's when you know you're really in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> what a wonderful way to start the show. Good. I had a whole list yeah, of and things. and apparently from... I'm in a sting. No, Look no. This. Well, see, well, this is what we expect from you in Radio Land. As soon as... The worrying thing is I've got to play uh, a song and, uh, you know, everyone wants to hear the next song's uh, uh, Raoul Automatic. Everyone wants to hear that. But I know as soon as I play that, you'll be grumpy again. You won't talk to me for upwards of three minutes and 26 seconds. But then, fun happens again. Yeah. So should we make a pact? Are we going to have a laugh? Well, let's just see. Let's not talk <sighs> about the tragedy of... Oh, I said the tra- strategy. Yeah, it's fine. Everyone makes mistakes. I heard that song yesterday, Steps, Tragedy. I haven't heard that for years. Those girls like that song, John. What Have you heard it as well? Were you doing the dance? Yeah, Excellent. I saw the dance oh going down there. Oh, my. 
Fantastic. Right, well, uh, coming up on today's show, uh, we've got all the usual stuff. We've got Am I Normal? We've got, which is basically like the quirky habit you feel compelled to do. You can text us in. John, what can they text us in on? Mobile phones. And what's the, uh, nice, what's the number? <laughs> 64046. And what's the email, Sam? Uh, you're quite right. It is uh, it is a form of communication used by. I'm not even. He's trying to try. take he my even joke. Yeah, tried yeah. to take my joke. He's stolen your joke. And he, what's the email? I've not wrote. I've not wrote it. Russell thirty seconds ago. Dot Howard. No. At no. Sexy Sam Do, do you know it, Russell? Russell dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. I was seconds away from giving out your hotmail account as a fallback. Yeah, giving out my real number. Good job on wearing my special T-shirt. Yeah, it's good job on wearing my stirrup, Sam. (laughs) I can see. (laughs) (laughs) Right, so coming up on today's show, we've got Am I Normal? So text us in on on that number or email us in. Anything, you know those quirky habits you feel compelled to do? We're all going to sort of create a community of freaks. We do this every week, so it's lots of fun. Time travel, where you go and why, fairly obvious. Let's play God is another thing we'll do later on. What you'd do if you're an all-powerful deity. But as it's New Year's Eve, we're going to make it, you know... Kind of a New Year's Eve show, so what are your New Year's resolutions? What was your favourite thing about Christmas? What are you going to do New Year's Eve? And what was your favourite thing about 2006? And what are you looking forward to in 2007? So text us in, email us in, share all your thoughts, and we'll have a really good time. <laughs> we were just discussing, uh, you know, you probably People think... falling over. You probably find yourself thinking, what happens in between the songs? Do they listen? Well, we do listen to all the songs, because they're good. But we're also <laughs> discussing what was the difference between Blue Tack and White Tack. I didn't know, because Adam, uh, our Blue assistant is... producer... It's just wait for your moment. Um, Adam, our assistant producer, before we do White Tack Wonder, um, came in because uh, I said, Have you got any Blue Tack? Because I always forget the email address, um, even though it's got my name in it. So I forget where you live, it's pathetic. Um, and Adam went and got some, and he brought back some White Tack. And I said, Hey, what's the difference between what White Tack and Blue Tack? Nobody knew. And then John seized the moment, pulled out a fist, pulled it towards himself, and declared, Well, why don't you do it in my voice? It's always funny. Well, no, because I've forgotten what it was. I wasn't really listening. <sighs> Blue tack, if you put it on walls, stains the wall, so white tack doesn't. We should have a little jingle on the end of that, with like your, your tips of how to improve the house. I've got a cracking tip, I nailed Here we go, here we go. Do John's tips. Always put them in a stirrup. Christmas dinner this year. Go on. I, I mentioned this on Christmas well, Eve. Yeah, let's do it. That's fine. Do your, do your uh, mash and your stuff like that the night before. And I thought, well, since I've got lots of time, I'm going to not chop things up very fine. Yeah. I'm going to have them big. So I, I cut the carrots just in half. Yeah. I just cooked them for ages. Yeah. And they were really flavoursome. If you chop them too small, too much water gets in the vegetables and it just tastes like water. <laughs> Next week, draining. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, see, my mum was cooking Christmas dinner. I was supposed to do it, but I had a bit of a huff on um, for reasons we won't go into. Um, no, the Xbox thing? Not the Xbox, no. The other thing. What's that? <laughs> Let's not do this. Don't try and wheedle out of me. You know what's happened in my life. Oh, yeah. So, the Xbox thing. That's that, well, that's annoying. We'll, that's we'll, good story. we'll get on to that later, yeah. my friend. Um, that's going to unite us in our anger. But I was supposed to cook the Christmas dinner. I cooked it last year and really enjoyed it, but... I was, you know, I just couldn't be asked. But the turkey was there, and I found I couldn't stop. I popped an apple in its, uh, you know, in its arse. <laughs> Don't give me that look. <laughs> like, that's the weirdest. Did it ask for an apple? Well, no, but you can't put it in its mouth. And But it got really addictive, so I was literally wandering into the kitchen, kind of popping it up, put three apples and a tangerine in. In the end, just to give it a bit of flavour, and uh, of apple and tangerine. Yeah, and at the end, it was really, it was really funny because mum went, "Who the bl- who's been putting apples in the turkey?" Like they'd been, and I didn't have the. So my mum's finding out now. If she's listening for the first time, she thought some burglar had come into the house <laughs> with one game. You can hit the CDs, and no, I was going to put this Bramley right up that turkey, but it was me. I did it. I was the. Cr- That's a horrible prank on Christmas Day. It's not what a if prank. It had really backfired. It's and not the a turkey prank. Well, it tasted w- rancid. Well, it's not going to taste horrible apples. It's going to taste of lovely apples and orchards and fun and, and magic and hope. Apple turkey. Yeah. Ap- oh. Mm. Not having that. it. Tangerine. Ta- oh, tangerine. Oh, then put a narner in it. As well. I didn't say that. All of a sudden, <laughs> Christmas dinner's ruined, yeah. and you sat chuckling to yourself. We can see what he'd done with that <laughs> But I didn't... I have never said... I'd love to speak how you impersonate me. I done put a nana in it. <laughs> that sounds like... Uh, if I ever do, like, a stand-up DVD, that's what you would give the title. <laughs> I done put a nana in it. Well done. I didn't put... Do you not put anything up the uh, up the turkey? No, why do we just get a crown? Can't be arsed with all that what? sticking stuff in it. Just get a crown, butter What's a crown? it up real nice. What's a crown? It's just uh, they cut round the breast... So you've just got breast. Cooks a lot quicker. 
uh, keep succulents. You don't have to cook it for so long. Oh, you don't get a real turkey? No, I'm faffing like... around, carving and having... Who wants a bit of leg? Well, I'll say I want leg, but I don't really. I just want breast, but there isn't enough breast for everyone. So I'll have a leg, but now I don't really want a leg. There's none of that. Just loads and loads of breast. Lovely stuff. And uh, how was your Christmas in general? How was your Sam's oh, good? It was grand. It was now, grand. what's weird, both of you, you didn't have your sisters there this year, did mm, you? Yeah, Lizzie. Yeah. Your sister this too. This has the feel of what's going to be a horrible reveal, isn't it? No. <laughs> That's quite interesting, because hey. both of you didn't have your sisters this year. They was due to turn up, and they didn't. Well, and I got a little surprise for you. Exactly. Let's have a look. Let's open up the turkey. There they are. <laughs> With apples in their mouth. Um, yeah. No, I haven't got your sisters. <laughs> Sorry. I haven't had, you know, I don't know where they are. They're probably fine. Let's not, you know. <laughs> My sister's in Australia now. Yeah. Uh, Is she? God, where's yours? <laughs> Buenos Aires. She went and saw Maradona strip joint. Speaking of strip joints. What, a Christmas? Yeah, I know. I God, nothing, nothing says Christmas more than seeing Diego Maradona strip joint. What's it called? Oh, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. But apparently he, he sort of wanders up and down outside, outside the strip joint, meeting the crowds. Who <sighs> dressed apparently as, go there to meet him. Dressed as Santa? Does he ever do a pole dance? I wish. That'd be I great, wish he it? did. That would be I've never been to it. We beautiful. were talking about this earlier. I've never been to a, uh, a strip club. And, uh, you know, uh, John has. You were, you were forced against your will. Yeah, it you? was my birthday treat from my friends. Oh, that's horrible, isn't they it? They told me it was an ordinary club, and I knew something was up. Absolutely. <laughs> I was so- getting a lot of interest from the ladies. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> But I had a right sulk. I just sat, and I just wanted to talk to him Because they come over and they pretend it's about having a chat, and yeah. they sit next to you and go, are you all right? And you go, yeah, now let's do this. But I didn't. I played them at their own oh, game. So good, good went, work, Jonathan. Yeah, all right. I went, I'm not so bad in yourself. Oh. And she said, oh, it's not about me. And I said, well, it can be. Let's have a chat. And then she wandered off. You loosened your stirrup, didn't you, mate? I didn't even take my stirrup with me. I was oh, in a goodness. good mood. It was my birthday. I managed to fashion one from drinking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bit angry. They're horrible. They are, aren't they? CD. I don't get it. It's the whole idea that you're kind of paying to make some lady with dead eyes dance at you. And you kind of go, oh, don't do that. It'll be... Well, Ugh. the big debate is if there's women willing to do it and if there's men willing to pay for it, is it all all right? That is the big debate. And until you get in there and you realise the men are filth and the women have no <laughs> self-esteem, then you think, no, there is definitely something wrong with this. I can't believe your mates, knowing you, I mean, I know you quite well, and there's no way that I would think that that's what you would want for a birthday tree. You'd like maybe an account to MFI or something, but certainly not, you know, let's take John, let's give him free run of Ikea on your own. That that you would like. But you certainly wouldn't like, uh, you know, ladies floppers jangling at you hither and thither, would no, you? No, I didn't have a dance. I was the only one. It was about eight of us when... See, but a dance, one, even that's a, dance. a lie. It's not really a dance, is it? It's an awkward squirm. <laughs> that's that's all it is, really. Although, we were talking about this earlier, um, because I'm, I'm talking about this a lot. Um, the, <laughs> I just with, with it just what happens to have been the last couple of days. My friend Rob's mate, whose name I've forgotten, which is really bad for me, but I met loads of them at the same time. So you're just kind of looking at them going, mm, mm, and you just see their mouths popping out. I'm Bob, I'm Steve, I'm Terry, whatever. And they were chatting about going to a spearmint rhino. And he's, he actually used the phrase, the other thing is my experience with strip clubs has been ruined because the first time I went, I went to a spearmint. And uh, it was really great, you know, lovely, lovely people. You meet them, you're chatting away. The bouncers are fantastic guys. And and then, but apparently there's a Spearmint Rhino Extreme, which I was on about earlier, which just all you hear when you hear the word extreme is paintball or, you know, them coming down on death slides, you know, from nowhere and just, you know, breasts <laughs> appearing. That sounds quite exciting. If you could combine, you know, paintball, maybe a laser quite that'd be quite good, wouldn't it? If you're playing a laser quasar and then a naked lady appeared Never and you had combine. to shoot her. What? Never combine paintballing with nudity. That's uh, that's John's tip uh, next <laughs> on week, week three. It just you doesn't work. One thing. Actually, they did take PJs always. That's a fair point. We were chatting about Christmas and stuff like that during the break. What was your favourite present? Jonathan Richardson, you first. Oh, I hate Jonathan. All right. I really hate that. All right, can I call you Mad Johnny JJ? What is it your PE teacher used to call you? John Joe or something, wasn't he? And you've still got your email address, John Joe. Well, I used to be known as John Joe. Why my is that? My name's Joel. Ah. He used to call me John Joe. Until and we- I was old enough to realise how stupid that sounded. Uh, but you've still got it as your email address. Yeah, well, John was gone. As, as God, that sounds like the beginning of yeah, a really bleak yeah. title, that John's gone. It's like a DVD you'd see about that. It's like that play with Tourette's. <laughs> that's John's, oh, John's not, mad. not mad. That's, that's good oh, telling. Let's not get on to that. You lent that to me. No, um, I did. That's one of the first things that uh, you gave. The first thing you ever gave me was a banana. 
and uh, several bananas, a few bananas, yeah, banana. And uh, then that John's not. It was brilliant. He came into this pub, and went get a load of that. That'll knock your socks off. That and it did. He came into this pub as if you were already sat there drinking ales with the lads. I was sat and there. Everyone, and, oh, there's a comedian. Exactly. Sat around. Sort of, there was a fire roaring, and I was telling one of me anecdotes. And uh, in comes this ragamuffin. <laughs> Please, sir, take my DVD. <laughs> so I took it, and it was good. I saw him a few ye- weeks ago uh, in a gutter, and I said, "Come here." No, it's really funny though, isn't it? It's that horrible. You're not supposed to laugh at it though. But there's a bit when he gobs at his teacher when he's like 14, and you cannot not laugh God, at it. It's that horrible thing of going, Jesus, did that really happen? And the, what's wonderful about it is the teacher so just like just moves the spit from her eye and goes, Oh well, never mind. All right, are we going to do our maths? Oh, do my. <laughs> Okay. And his mate's fantastic, isn't he? He's got the... Uh, if, if you haven't seen Listening Home, uh, John's Not Mad, it's the DVD about the guy with Tourette's. He has the most mild-mannered friend in the world, because they're in a car, they're in, like, a little mini, and he can't... He, To be honest, the worrying thing about it, that's the, apparently that's the bit when he's at his worst, but that's how I behave when I'm in John's car. <laughs> Just, like, press buttons and move... You get so bored in the car, you go, oh, let's make something happen. And let's, let's put health and safety in the lap of the gods and just press anything. Yeah, exactly. Or Handbrake? Like, do I? I don't press that or lift that. You would that. do. I wouldn't. Um, and then what, what does his mate do when he... <laughs> well, he starts screaming at him because yeah. he's reversing and he just makes a noise. And he's, that's what's really hard, Johnny, when we're in the motor <laughs> and you shout, whoa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he smacks the rear view mirror. And but he's oh. so lovely, isn't he? His friend, he's just kind of, oh, you'll be the death of me. But And he's literally sort of screaming all these obscenities in like a, in like a shopping centre. And he just chuckles and went, oh, don't worry about it, John. I'd love to have a friend like that. He's inspiration. You have, mate. Who? Oh, me. Is that you? You're yeah. like that. You get a right Marty on. Well, Marty. sometimes I'll let you away with it if I think you're genuinely excited. Yeah. But when you're just showing off... Yeah. Someone's got to tell you, haven't they? That's right. That's when you take my bell away, isn't it? That's, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> and the only reason you have that bell around my neck is because you know where I am. Exactly. <laughs> right, so that refers to a, uh, a Daily Star story that I read earlier. Um, a very odd story. It's about some lady. Shall we go into this? Yeah, let's go into... Actually, yeah, Jesus, because it's the news, and the last thing we need is for me to tell a story that could appear on the news, and that, that's going to ruin it. I but, don't think it's going to be on the news in light of recent events. Oh, really? I would be terribly, terribly surprised. Well, let's see, shall we? Let's see. We were just trying to uh, perk up John. Um, hello, hope you're very well. Are uh, you listening <laughs> to Russell Howard on Six Music? I always put my hands up. Define perk up. Perk up. I got um, what I would describe as cock knocked uh, a couple go of days ago. Yeah. I was in a pub in Birmingham called the Wellington. Lovely pub. Lovely cracking pub. pub. You have to order ale by the pump because they have so many different ales on. Right. I went to the toilet. I That's like, like the beginning of an Amy Winehouse song. <laughs> I went to the toilet and some bloke punched my nuts. Carry on. I come out of the toilet. Yeah. And, uh... You had your gear out? No, I'd put it all away. Oh, stirrup. Folded away. Lovely. Back pocket. Nice. Just in case. Exactly. Three. Right. And then I got out of the toilet and I had to sort of wait for a man to come through a little... A ginnel of people. There was a little alleyway. I ate ginnels. And we couldn't both get through. So I waited. And when he got to the end, he sort of looked me up and down... And he, he put his his fingers in the sort of, you know, when you're about to flip a coin. Yeah. He put it like that, and he, his index finger, he just tapped it against my Tra- little chap yeah. and said, cheers, mate, and went in the toilet. If anything, that doesn't make it better, does it? Because you, know, you expect, like, a pat on the shoulder or something like that, but a flick to the... And you're calling that cock-knocking, are you? Well, I mean, let's see if it catches on. Let's see. If but he new... basically knocked my cock. Apparently Moby does that at parties when he's bored, doesn't he? He uh, taps celebrities with his wang. Like, celebrity parties, not like... <laughs> I'm sure it isn't family bashes, or his auntie would be really bored. You're not allowed to do it with yours, though. I don't think you're allowed... To, yeah, you are. Well, you, can't get, you can't coerce your mate into doing it. <laughs> no, but, I mean, I, I mean, I was offended at having mine touched by a man's hand. Oh, come on, Th- mate. Through the trouser shield, but... O- offended, but slightly pleased. No! Hey, come on, it's contact. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, and I did have a big arrow pointing at it. That's correct. <laughs> with cock knock. <laughs> yeah, flashing. Touch this. Um... But to get yours out and touch other people with it. I'm Maybe not, he's got, like, one that. of those sort of diseases where you can't really... You know when people, like, synthanesia, when you sort of smell colours and stuff like that? Maybe when he thinks he's giving money, he flicks someone in the genitals. I'm trying to think outside the box here. 
in case, well, which case it, it was pretty much a box related incident if i'm honest imagine if he if, if he's got that illness if that illness <laughs> exists that would problem. be horrific tipping wouldn't it imagine that you you cook him a lovely meal and he launches his fist at your at your scrote that'd be horrible we were supposed to be talking about Christmas. Yeah, how let's did, do that instead. How do, we, how do we get onto this lovely? That's called coining. Our friend jo- uh, Nobler, uh, yeah. who uh, our friend Nobler, who um, who we live with, is a lovely bloke, but uh, lives in the glory. He went to Oxford University and had a, had loads of fun there. And they used to do a thing where they used to sit on the floor and throw coins at each other's. Uh, balls. <laughs> Let's move on. But and and he always goes on about how much fun it is, and we always well, you know kind of it's look a at him. If that's happening, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. Well, he's kind of like, it's fairly dull. So we're on about Christmas presents uh, during the break. What was the best Christmas present that you got? And don't forget, you can text us in. Or what was the best thing about Christmas? Uh, text us in six four zero four six or email russell dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. Uh, John, what was the best present you got this year? We're well, going to get angry because I'm not going to. I'm not going to rank. It's too close You'd, after the incident, and yeah. people might be listening. So for I'm goodness' not, sake, don't rank. I got. To uh, I got lovely presents from everyone, and it oh. was all very nice. Okay, someone's not playing the game. What about you, Sam? I'll rank on it. I think uh, it's a it's a tie, a direct tie between this wonderful. You just got a tie. Yeah, that's rubbish. I did get a tie. Actually. Anyone can get a tie. Rubbish. Rubbish. It was velvet. <laughs> a uh, Daffy I, Duck on it. Yeah, but uh, it's it's this this well, wonderful that's quite gorgeous. bracelet with. Oh, that uh, is horrific. Who got on. you that? Precisely. My girlfriend, Russ. She got me that. Wow. Describe that to the people at home. It is three skulls, named Horace, Wallace and Clifford, uh, <laughs> who, uh, they're, they're silver, they're shiny, there are two red eyes on the main skull, and uh, distinctly 3D, a fine specimen of jewellery. That's horrible. <laughs> Let's be honest. That is, I wouldn't wear that. Or a pewter goblet. <laughs> that makes me sound like a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> so you got that and a pewter goblet. That's yeah. fantastic. I'm slowly, slowly. Oh, I slowly quite like a goblet babies. though. That'd yeah. be good, wouldn't it? But it feels a bit. If you're drinking like Nesquik out of it, it doesn't feel as good. But oh, no. well, maybe it does. Maybe if you go fetch my, I'd love. Imagine being able to say that. Fetch my goblet. That would make oh, that Nesquik. Yeah, Nesquik slightly spoils it. It's not as good. Well, that's that's quite cool. Um, what what about the? How do your presents go down? We know about you, Sam. You can't buy presents at all. How about yours, John? How did they go? I had a good year, I think. Yeah. What did you get yeah. your mum's and dad's? Um, um, I got my mum a freezer, lovely, and a hamper, nice, full of delicious comestibles. How how about you, Sam? Well, it was largely a dressing gown and a clothes kind of a Christmas. A large dressing gown for shame, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But not not defense. little dolls. Yeah, not yeah. lovely little not dolls. things made out of like knits. <laughs> well, it's funny you should mention that. I have got you a replacement present after the the bashing oh, I brilliant. got on the Let's Christmas Eve present. Go on, right. One second. Not great radio, Sam. <laughs> You should be telling the Xbox story to warn Sam now, just what he's in this. for if now, this doesn't go down well. I don't know if you've heard this, Sam, right? But I, because I've had, uh, you know, sort of, I earn more money than I've ever earned, <laughs> so I thought I'd get, like, decent presents this year, right? So I got my mum and sister, like, a, a sort of a, a night stay at a spa, which is quite a nice present, isn't it? That's quite good. Got my dad a painting, that went down well. I got my brother an Xbox 360. Do you know what he said to this? Yeah, exactly. Why do I? That's how you should be. He went, well, it's not a Sue, is it? He's, he's 24. He's my little brother. He's dead. He's dead to me, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's the moment when he stopped being my little brother. Well, I need the suit, did I? So it's not I can use. What are you on about? That's an Xbox 360. Now, I might have said, you know, you're acting like a sausage. If you act like a sausage again, <laughs> I'll come over there and treat you like a sausage. Um, but I was really, really, really annoyed. It's that, you know, when you kind of go... Because I built up in my head and went, now this is going to be good, he's going to love that. And he hated it. Hated it. Thought it was a useless... Actually said the phrase, don't need it. What do I need that for? Come on, that's an Xbox Jesus. 360. That's good, isn't it? I mean, you can also buy, like, a Wii or something like that. Um, but the presents I got this year were incredible. Um, my, I got... Um, my mum, right, this is the best present, right, my my mum, and she she went, oh, here you go, everyone watch, everyone watch, we have to, like, sit around and kind of watch everyone sort of open it, right, although my nan didn't go for that this year, she's just ripping us open like a rabid dog, uh, it's because she got loads, like, oh, like, nan, wait your turn, no, no, my, oh, look at that, John, put it, rank it, go next, and so we opened it, right, and my mum went, oh, look, here we go, and she gave me two really, really tiny porcelain clogs, right, and then went, oh, that's what you've always wanted, isn't it? Like that, and really put it upon me, and and you find yourself going, yeah, yeah, I always wanted t- 
two tiny porcelain clogs. Yeah, because you go on about that sort of thing, don't you? You love all that. So you're having to hold, <laughs> you're having to hold these porcelain clogs going, no, they are. They're brilliant. Yeah, they're really, really great. And then mum went, because he talks about that in his comedy act. He does a skit about it. And I've never, but you start doubting it. Maybe I did. Maybe I've got a thing well, let's about be honest. tiny porcelain clogs. You talk a lot of rubbish. I talk rubbish. About a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it all comes into my head and comes out of my mouth. I don't actually care about anything I say. I'm a Chinese meal of a comic. It's gone within the hour. But my <laughs> mum has, has given me two tiny clogs and wants me to carry them around with me. But she did that Have you one. Got them with you now? No, oh. they're in my bag. Um, but my dad, this is freaky, right? My dad gave me uh, an all in one leisure suit. Um, he calls it that. He's got one himself. I call it a Lycra cat suit. And I haven't, Sam wanted me to bring it, but it, on, it's horrific. It was a deal. Oh, I really hurts. In my mind, you've, you've it, shirked that responsibility. But my dad wants me to wander around like Tesco with him, like a couple of gimps, like, <laughs> like that. Like, it's, oh, honestly, guys it's on the end of Euro truck. Yeah, it looks disgusting. And like, it, but he wants us like running around like where we live, as an example. How like, much would it take to see that next week? Because I'd pay a lot of money to see that next oh, week. It's, honestly, it's really... But again, it's that thing, you know, I had to put it on because it was Christmas. That so. is a <laughs> rare father and son uh, moment. Well, it's a rare moment when you dressed up like a gimp clutching under <laughs> tiny clogs and and your nan's still opening presents she's got oh two ronnie's dvd it's been a year it's been a year what do you think your parents are trying to tell you god knows a cat suit and some tiny tiny clogs all right what are they trying to tell me then <laughs> i don't know i'm not a psychologist but you're in real trouble well that's obvious sam's got our presents right. oh cool what you got us mate right well you uh john have, have got Ooh, this nice Nice. Which is a very sensible book. It's the Brewer's Book of Rogues, Villains and Eccentrics. And that might be the sound to your reaction. You, Russ, have got this. Yes, <laughs> now that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Sam's giving me a print of Michael, ja uh, Michael Jackson uh, holding on. Is that a mic he's holding I on I hope to? it's a mic because yeah. it looks in ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much. I mean, it's a week too late. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's brilliant. Thank you very much, mate. You didn't have to do that. Absolutely. Oh, how cool is that? Uh, you didn't have to do that. Have yeah. you listened back to the Christmas <laughs> Eve show? Yeah, we really know. You know that bit where you said, you'd better get me something else or you're <laughs> off the show? Yeah. <laughs> there was. I didn't say that. Did I say that? <laughs> you, you might have said something. I made like him that. sit in the corner. That was funny. Um, the, other, the other cool thing about Christmas is, of course, uh, Christmas parties. That's always uh, a bit of a hoot. Um, the, uh, and we'll, we'll chat about that in a minute. Let's have a song. Um, oh, we've got uh, The Greatest by Cat Power. Yeah. It's just one of yours, isn't it? I like Cat Power, You're yeah. down with the cat uh, power. <laughs> God, that didn't roll off the tongue. I'm a little bit um, I'm a little bit giddy. Sam's just giving me a present I actually want. We had uh, an email in, uh, if I can find it. Uh, no, a text, actually, uh, from Mark in Winchester. Actually, Russell, you should stuff a uh, turkey's ass with plenty of fruit, but this doesn't flavour it. It helps to keep the bird moist. So uh, I do know what I'm talking so about. So does basting and covering with foil. Get in the 21st century. No, I will not. That, that text coming from someone who gave their children satsumas and coal in their stockings. Just because it's traditional. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Come on, you, guys. Did you slip him? Don't a leave me hanging. Oh, he's taking them down. No one's going to leave you hanging. He gets very funny about fruit up a turkey. I'd go ape, absolutely ape. Well, that should be. We should get him a tattoo with that fruit. Up, <laughs> fruit up a turkey. I'd go ape. That, oh, that'd be a really great advert. Just you. You could be the new Bernard Matthews. Hey, are you listening, people at home? Fruit up a turkey. I go bloody ape. And just like a cowering lady in the background. She knows. I don't go with her. She bloody knows. <laughs> hey, I, she. That could be you. <laughs> I don't go with any fruit with uh, <laughs> with meat. I watch Nigella Lawson's Christmas cookery show. Basically, cook something, smother it in maple syrup, and cook it a bit more. Everything had maple syrup on it. Yeah, but I ain't just you, back I ain't, off, woman. I ain't why you watch it. That is why I watch no, it. No, no, no. Don't have me tarred with your brush. I watch <laughs> it for culinary tips. <laughs> and a culinary tip is not if you find this cool taste what you like, like maple mate. syrup. <laughs> cool them what you like. I said cool them what you like. Culinary I said tips. culinary Jeez. tips. Yeah, I was Jeez. all about her knockers. <laughs> You're listening to Six Music with uh, me, Russell Howard. If it's what? knockers you like, Anthony Wild Thompson. <laughs> yeah. And he jiggers about a bit more oh, as well. But he excited. freaks me out because I tried watching it. But he just every time I see him, he just looks like Gwildor from Absolutely. Masters of the Universe. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you, you kind of go, this is what you've got to do. And you Whoa. just expect, yeah, you exactly, you expect that. <laughs> that was that thing. The, the key. That, the key, the tune to that is fantastic. That's a great film, that. Oh. Very scary, though, for a, for a kind of a kid's action. Like, some of their monsters are really horrible. Especially when they gold up Skeletor and he gets all sort of gimp-like. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's a good film, though, isn't it? It's one of Dolph Lundgren's better ones. Better. Not best. He-Man. No. 
Hey? I got burned by him and I went to see a Father Christmas when yeah. I was a kid. Here we go. And you know, go you sit on his knee and you get a present at the end. Yeah. Well, he stuffed an apple. <laughs> <laughs> he, there were two presents left and one was small and one was massive. And because yep. I was a kid, I picked the massive one. Good thinking. And it was his, what's that purple cat thing that he rides on, He-Man? Battle cat. Battle cat. It was that. And I hated He-Man and I really learned a lesson that day about picking the big thing. Because I thought the little thing might have been cool. Unbelievable you are. How old were you when you learnt that lesson? Four. Imagine his diary. Dear diary, today I look at Battle Cat and know that I made a mistake. But don't worry, dear diary, in the future I shall get small things. That's Greed what... doesn't pay. <laughs> no, exactly. Although it does lead you to kidnapping all them dwarfs. I don't get that. As in you, you stole tiny things. Oh, yeah. They've got nothing, it's oh, fine. Yeah, it's still fine. quite big, a dwarf. Yeah, what's... I don't know. Smaller than an app... Uh, a, a six foot man, but bigger than the, the battle cat. You can put them in suitcases. Have you never seen uh, the James Bond film? They put you can't Nick... do that, Russell. You can. I've done, <laughs> I did it with my uh, my ex girlfriend. Put her in a suitcase. I mean, she was up for it. It was like a laugh, and she sort of got out and went rah. I didn't, you know. <laughs> although, uh, anyways, let's uh, let's move on from that. A lot of that, a lot of that this week, isn't there? A lot of <sighs> yeah. Well, you know, that's because I'm masking sadness. I'm used to that. Yeah. Usually, if I meet someone new, we'll chat for about 30 seconds, and it doesn't matter who I've met or what circumstances we've met under. Mm -hmm. After 30 seconds, a conversation will end with, ah. Ah, that deepest of sighs. There's yeah. loads of that at Christmas. My brother does that, right? My brother finds the negative in every single story, like a, like an Xbox, for example. But um, but at Christmas, my, my, um, my uh, uncle Jonathan, I think he is. Is he my uncle? Yeah, he is. <laughs> I've got so many close family. I've got so many families I don't know, right? Um, and he, uh, his kids were. They've got they've got bikes for Christmas. They're, I think they're like six and four, maybe, and it's just fantastic. They're like riding their bikes, happy as anything. And I tell you what, it's worth having. I'd like to have a kid just to tickle it alone. It's a brilliant feeling tickling the kid. It's like we were on about the other day when you're making a kid laugh. You know, because they're not doing it for any reason. See, the funny, or they're staring at you, dribbling, you know, and tickling's cheating, but it's lo loads of fun. Anyway, they were riding bikes, having lots of fun, and then he put their tiny bikes into his car and kind of shut the boot, and then we went for a walk. And my brother looked at that situation, went, caution, a couple of years, you won't be able to fit the bikes in the car, will you? <laughs> There's no need. That's his first thought, that of absolute misery. It was unbelievable. It's like, Very oh. competitive, you and your brother, though. Yeah, but his thought of it's like, oh, there you go, there you go, there's a uh, spa to Gloucester. <laughs> yeah, it could get run over by a car tomorrow, though. Yeah, you could do, but there's no way of looking at it like that. He's the thing about kids that age, isn't it horrible? When you, Have you ever had this sensation where you think, oh, I've, I've got such chemistry with kids, you smile at them and they burst into tears? It's horrible, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They backfire moment but in you, a supermarket. Absolutely, but it's that awkward thing. But there's so many things go through your head. You see a cute kid doing something cool and you think, oh, smile, no, I can't because then the mum will think I'm a paedophile, I can't do that. And then, and then you smile and then you make them cry and it doesn't <laughs> look good. Especially if you're clutching onto something, like, you know, random, you've just got batteries in your hand and you're smiling and, and just, why are you making my kid cry? I'm just buying batteries. However, I've got one of those faces. I, I can never, I'm really envious of those people that can smile at a, uh, a baby and make them laugh. I haven't got that skill. No, absolutely the opposite. See, I, I disagree with you. I'd have thought that you would make uh, kids happy. Well, it depends on whether I'm wearing my tramp coat or not. If I'm wearing my tramp coat, that, that ends badly generally. Yeah. Once I evade the security guards in whatever supermarket I'm in, generally it leads to kids crying when I smile at them, which is a fun day. I'd imagine you smile and then give a tip to you, John. I do. Help the kid out. Yeah, exactly. Right, there you go. And don't forget, keep your points for your nectar card. There you go. Move along. Move along. That is a good tip. It's a very good tip. But should they have it age four? Oh, always. Consider it an investment for the oh, kids. Christ. Can you imagine his, his boy? He's going to have so many facts. <laughs> Literally, as he, as he comes out of your wife. Right, let's learn a few life lessons, shall we? Raw plugs are very useful. Sorry. I have never used a raw plug. How do you like that? I'll just bang a nail straight into the wall. Roll plug, small plug. That's the catchphrase in my house. Yeah, exactly. And your li little kid will be, they'll be his first words. <laughs> Roll plug, small plug. Daddy taught me that word before he ran off. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, you're going to run off, aren't you? Spent the last six weeks on this show talking about how I can't get a woman. Now I've got a wife and a kid and I'm leaving it. <laughs> How's that happened? Because you're a monster. Right, <laughs> we've had... <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's going to be awkward if you do, though. Well, I'll be, you I'll be like Nostradamus, eh? 
John's in a right funny mood this morning. <laughs> yeah. Let's lure him into being a good mood and then accuse him of leaving his fictitious wife. Hey, talking of Christmas fun, we've had loads of uh, emails in. We've got one from Dan in, uh, in London. The best thing about Christmas, I accidentally called my nan Stinky Pinky to her face. It was meant to be general exclamation, but the timing was all wrong. And my brother took a photo of me from behind that looks like a woman. I was wearing just a G-string, but I'm secretly proud. And I ate my own sick, but not in a gross way, just in a cool, groovy way. I'm not sure how eating your own <laughs> sick can be groovy, but it's quite nice. We've got a really lovely one here from uh, Chris in London. Uh, best thing about Christmas, Christmas specials on TV, uh, the You've Been Framed Christmas special is one of the funniest things I've seen for a while. People falling over is never not funny. I think we can all agree on that. It was I watched it, it was very good. It really, I was at the gym, uh, like on a treadmill, running along, and then you, <coughs> l- you see like a woman trip over a dog, and it's just brilliant. Do you know what gets on my nerves about You've Been Framed? What is it, John? <laughs> I would rather <laughs> just 20 minutes of really good ones of people almost hurting themselves yeah. don't feel the need to pad it out by 10 minutes just by having a baby I don't want to just look at a baby in a Santa hat Girl, I know it's Christmas you've been framed but a baby just looking at a camera and the mum and dad going oh he's looking at the camera but that's nice you're spoiling the rhythm of it bang 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 door face cake pond rope swing bang yeah, you've got to trip great. that baby Think and then that... just a dog Listen chasing its tail a minute ago oh I'd never leave my kids don't like looking at a baby dressed up as Santa he's no dad other people's <laughs> babies are oh you don't want to look up you don't want to boring. look up no they're not they're brilliant no. They all look like gremlins. They're fantastic. Pulling gim- f- funny faces. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say gimpy faces. I've never seen a baby pull a gimpy face. Well, that's a- good of you, Russell, to buy a, a, present, for, <laughs> a present for our daughter. Oh, what's this? <laughs> it's leather. Oh, she will fit in that nice, wouldn't she? Let's put her in a little bouncer. <laughs> Let's no. put her in a tiny suitcase. Yeah, Do you know it? they'll fit? They're like tiny dwarves, babies. Yeah. Where's your friend John? Ah, he's outside drinking. Yeah. Says he hates everyone. Him and Tina have had a right kiffle. <laughs> yeah, let's talk... No. Do you want to talk about that? What? Your celebrity wife? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can't believe that song's called Ooh Wee. And the only line is Ooh Wee. That's not good enough. Okay. Do you want to write to Nate Dogg, Ghostface Killer, or Mark Ronson? <laughs> Who are you going to write to? That'd be good, well, wouldn't it? They probably it? can't read if they've written a song called Ooh Wee. <laughs> well... Am for, I wrong? Am I wrong? For, probably. Very, very wrong there. But it's nice to know that Ron Atkinson's taken up DJing. <laughs> um, that'd be great. Imagine that if Ghostface Killer opened up a letter from you. We've got a letter here from uh, John Richardson. Dear Ghostface, I did not enjoy your song, Ooh Wee. I like weeing. I like the word ooh. The combination together is fun, but not in music. Why bother to you write find it down? Me, what, you find me at Ikea <laughs> dancing around like a... Ha- Why bother to write it down? I mean, that someone's written that. Someone's gone... I've got an idea for a song. That isn't how and it works. And then someone else has gone, go on, and he's gone, right, you know, ooh we yeah. do that for three minutes, just in the background, oh, bam, 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 bam. They've taken that to someone and gone, what do you think of this? And he's gone, oh, the music world is ready for ooh we Yeah. And well, then it, they've released it and people have bought it. Sometimes songs just happen. I refer you to our flatmate, uh, Nobbler's tunes, doing a poo, having a wee, having a wee, and doing a poo. But the day that gets released and people buy it. I buy it. That's, that's... That's the most offensive song I've heard since Hey Ya. Oh, that's a cracker. That how can you like? I know I'm the only person in the country. How that can you like not it? like I a song it. that contains the lyrics? Let me some sugar. I am your neighbour. Damn about right. The bit before that. What? All that uh, rubbish talk. Anyway, let's. We're gonna break. There's people listening who like music and they'll be offended that I. Hey, you're fine. Have opinions. You're I'm not al- allowed to have opinions. You're allowed either. to have opinions. You have them a lot, but you're not allowed allowed. I just think if you're going to go to the bother of writing lyrics, say something interesting, and music should be about saying something that you could say in a better form. I can say ooh wee and pretty much get the concept of ooh wee across without yeah. having to put a beat behind it so people go, oh, oh, ooh wee. Oh, good. Yeah, fair enough. Good. But we're agreed on uh, when a point is made with music, it's better than anything that stand up could ever be. Um, I think we have to be. It's much better. When I watch Rufus Wainwright, better than uh, it's better than any any comedy I've ever seen. Better than even even you know. Yeah, but you're a comedian, so they're all biased. Yeah, I guess so. If Rufus Wainwright watched your comedy, he'd probably see, won't that, be a fan. But, but. it's it's that awkward thing, isn't it? I'd come off it. He'd love to see him. He's coming to see me at the Soho. Oh, um, is he? Yeah, of course he is. Is he? Who isn't? And then <laughs> and then <laughs> me? Uh, well, you're not coming because you can't. No. Get we're, we're tickets, out. yeah. yeah. Well, you can come watch if you want. No. If, if you want to see an If Dot Comedy nominated show. In fact, while we're here, <laughs> I'm going on tour in February and March. Come along, it'll be fun. Um, 
to various menus. Uh, you can see it on my website. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, uh, I was, I was going to say something, then you put me off for a straw. Do we? <laughs> no. If you are going to say do we, let me know and I'll back it up with some kazoo. It, but it's, it's that thing of sometimes you want to hear music that's wonderful and, and powerful and sort of puts you in a special place, and then sometimes you want to hear a little bit of a silly song. I tell you what, this is all going on the Six Music Message Board. I can read it now. It's fine. Who is that Northern Gimp? <laughs> It's me! <laughs> it's me! Oh, we should put like a little dancing image of you dressed up as a gimp. Who's like, the northern gimp? It sounds like something that Vernon Kay would, uh, you know, sort of... Oh, God, I've got little time for Vernon Kay. What a dickhead. Right, what uh, <laughs> he is... He, I know I'm probably not allowed to say that, but how on earth has he got to the stage where he is? Because he's, he's I, 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 four. We're not allowed to say dickhead, no. Oh, he probably works for the BBC. He's not where he is, come on. He's on Radio 1, isn't he? Is he? Yeah. Oh, good for him. They play ooey. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, then. Sam, we've had some emails in. Yeah, what was the best thing about Christmas, you asked, and this guy answered, it's a toss-up between getting dumped or being so drunk I peed on the floor in my mum's house. Lovely touch. That's a horrible window into his world. But you'll see your deep, sexy, gravelly voice made that sound quite nice. <laughs> I'm saying that item two was probably somehow related to item one. If you're the kind of guy who gets drunk and pees on your mum's you shag pile, you <laughs> probably don't deserve a girlfriend. <laughs> see, Sam could say shag pile and make it sound lovely and evocative. Say it, Sam. Shag pile. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you go on, say Shag pile. See, it sounds lovely. Now you say shag pile. Shag pile. Ah, oh, you're putting on your sexy voice. <laughs> Earlier on you went, shag pile, and it just sounded like something where dogs meet. <laughs> <laughs> Coming down shag pile, I'll be there. Yeah. Sorry, mate. It's all right. I don't talk shag piles how I'd say. Shag pile. Hey, do you want to meet me at the shag pile? I'm coming down shag pile. I'm <laughs> taking my bike skidder. <laughs> that, you can have backies on it. That, that have backies. Oh, my God. I can't sit down anyway. I've got half pound of apples up my backside. <laughs> <laughs> backies. That was the most exciting thing in the world, wasn't it? When somebody... Oh, I never did backies. Of course you didn't. Health you and did. safety. Yeah, exactly. Christ alive. You probably had a tough top when you were like... Have you got helmet and pads? No, and I don't have helmet and pads. I'm on me. I'm on my BMX. <laughs> I'm on my Apollo 550. I'm cruising. Uh, Greg Higgins wants a lift. He's getting a lift. Yeah. He's got if a Greg Higgins roll. wants a lift, on his head be it. But I, I'm not getting the back of any bike. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you should be allowed to drive, let alone... Who, me? Yeah. Uh, what was the best thing about Christmas? Uh, I've got somebody here, the birth of the baby Jesus, of course. They probably emailed into the wrong show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I can't say that out. It was the... Uh, I'll just say the hanging of. It's <laughs> a pretty interesting thing. Uh, Mandy's emailed in a cracker. Yep. Mandy from Tyne and Wish. She hasn't <coughs> said her surname, but I hope her mum's listening. Mandy says, best thing about Christmas, getting a 42-inch plasma TV and not having my mother to stay as she crushes my soul. Okay. <laughs> so that's Mandy from Tyne and Weir. What have you found, uh, John? Kaylee has, uh, has written that uh, her 62-year-old grandmother was trying to assault a 21-year-old male in a utility room. <laughs> uh, True meaning of Christmas. That's great, that isn't it? There's something about um, Booth. There's always, you know, quite, you know, a mature lady who's on the who's on heat, like capturing somebody and like a little scuttling up to them and stuff like that. I've been the victim of that many a time. Yeah. Um, oh, here we go again. What? All the ladies. Well, they're not ladies. They're my aunties. But they're lovely people. If they're listening, they're lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just like you know, I had all those photos you have with you, Nan. The best thing about Whoa. Christmas. Oh, come on! Don't be like that, you beast! <laughs> I thought that's what we were talking about. What about photos of my Nan? Why would you go whoa, making it because sound like the, this it's whole soft conversation focus, and I've just is got about jeans and shoes? What? Jeans and what? You make it sound like I've got. A lot, I'm on a beach with my Nan. I'm just wearing like blue jeans and no socks. I'm not. This is all good. Roll with this. I'm not but I never with said any of this. Yeah, why don't you leave you your see? kids? <laughs> but right. What if I had some? Yeah, well, good luck with that, weirdo. You can't really walk into other people's houses and storm out on their wives. It doesn't feel the same. Oh, that would be bloody brilliant, though, yeah. wouldn't it? What a crack and laugh that would be. Just yeah. to wander in and go, I'm leaving you. Yeah. And it's like uh, Roger Irrelevant from Viz. I don't read Viz. Oh, it's great. You should give it a hoot. Um, now, the best thing, the best thing about Christmas for me, uh, every year I go to a party called, um, it's my uncle's party, and it takes place, the beginning is at a place called Tucker's Grave, deepest West Country. It's fantastic. A place just out, that's sort of a place called Radstock, and it's full of these, I've told you about it before, John, but to the people listening at home, to put it into a sort of a context, they're like happy pirates um, with really red faces, the fires blazing, they drink this kind of bright orange cider. They're happy giggly, drunk, like toddlers. They're wonderful people. And my two, my, there's three of my favourites that go there. It's a bloke called Chivers. First time I met him a couple of years ago, he ran up to me in a party and went, here, what's your top three horror films ever? 
And I panicked and went, hell right, hell raiser. And he went, wrong, and ran off. He's a lunatic. Just top threes all the time. Brilliant. He claims to be the richest mid, uh, the richest bachelor in Midsummer Norton. He's wonderful. By virtue, he's got two properties. Um, and he's very proud of him. He's brilliant, wonderful man. But you, but you think he'd read nothing but the star, but he's in, into Mark Steele and the Independent. He's brilliant. My favourite, though... There's a bloke called Critchell who's addicted to setting off fireworks. He's fantastic, which is a wonderful addiction, like booze, drugs, <gasps> Catherine Wheel. And finally, the, the the pick of the bunch is a man called Cuddly Bob. Now, Cuddly Bob, what would you think if I were to... to here's Cuddly Bob, what would you think? Affable, large. What he does, padded. he's a huge, um, he's a huge bald man who cuddles people. Uh, he cuddles my dad. You know what my dad's like. My dad's born the same day as Hitler. He's a very angry man. And... But th- when you're being cuddled by a man you don't know, he's not flicking your nuts, you have to worry about that, John. It's the, honestly, it's so lovely. And he he came up to me and he went, I've been thinking about this all year, right? I, I work, right? I get really bored at my job, I ate it, and I sort of stare, I'm in a factory doing all these boring things. And I set myself little tasks, little thoughts, little hypotheses, right? And here's this thing, and I want, oh, it's going to be known as Cuddly Bob's Conundrum, and if it takes off, we're going to do one of these every week. So text in your answer to this on 64046 or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. Now, we with your answer. Now, Cuddly Bob goes, right, there's a bloke and a wife, right? They're married, happy married, right? They're at an airport. They've forgotten their tickets. The bloke has a time machine. He travels back. He finds the tickets in the past, puts them on the top of the mantelpiece so he knows where they are, and then he's about to go back to the future so he knows where the tickets are. Now, and he's like pointing his big drunken fingers at me. Now, his wife comes home, says, do you want some sex? Who doesn't want sex, Russell? Who doesn't want sex? They have sex. He goes back to the future. He doesn't tell his wife in the future. Now, is that cheating? So, text in 64046 or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. So, you understand it, yeah? I don't understand if it's an ex if it's an ex-wife. No, 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 it's not an ex-wife. It's his wife. But well, she, she's she'll a- remember then, so there's no issue. I'll explain it to everyone in the... Here we go. Right. So... To, to get it again, right, a man and his wife are at an airport, they forget their tickets, the man travels back in his time machine, remembers where the tickets are, but whilst he's in the past, his wife finds him in the kitchen, they have sex. He travels back to the future to meet his future wife, who's the same person, um, who's just had sex with in the past. He doesn't tell her, has he been unfaithful? No. No, okay. And she that, wouldn't know, Absolutely would not. She wouldn't know, but... Cause it she'd had, know they'd had sex. No, she, she wouldn't, wouldn't know. know it would that be, it was him from the future. No, no, no. See, what the, see the thing is, where it, gets, where it gets interesting is that she's had sex with him, but what he was explaining, Cuddly Bob is kind of going, now, she's had sex, I know, let's see, 20 times, right? He's had sex 21 times. Has he been unfaithful? And, and you no, kind of go, hasn't. well, that's exactly what I said, because, because what, how I said it was, well, if you took her memory away and you put it down, you know, in, in front of her, laid it down... You'd, there would be that incident in the kitchen where they had sex, and she'd be like, oh, "I don't remember that." And like, "Yeah, but it, did happen. it must have happened because it was in a." But she's not aware of it. Um, but then he posed the question: Now, if the bloke keeps travelling back from the future in his time machine to have sex with his younger wife, is that cheating? And then you find yourself going, oh, "It kind of is, isn't it?" That's what's interesting about it because there's because uh, there is a point so. if you do it because he said you do it five times that's fine if you're doing it like 500 times to be i mean to be honest the wife should really re- realize when a 60 <laughs> year old man turns up and goes i'm your husband then you probably think well there's probably something up here but yeah is that cheating i just don't how does she not know they've had sex because she can't remember because why not because it's happened to her yeah but, but she wouldn't oh god how old is she how old is she? <laughs> oh, no, 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 nothing like that. The, it would be in her memory. She wouldn't think it was Bob from the future. She'd just think it was Bob in the kitchen. She'd yeah. remember a time when Bob said, I'm just putting these tickets on the mantelpiece because we're flying next week, I don't want to lose them. Let's what, have a bit of a rumpty dump on the sink. Yeah. She'd remember that. Well, I'll tell you what would be really interesting. If they were having, as John put it, a rumpty dump, and th- with so uh, future husband is having sex with past wife, but past husband comes home... <sighs> How would you feel if you caught yourself having sex with your wife? Well, you'd join in. I would, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a different story. <laughs> uh, um, I'd, oh, I th- oh, God, it's too early for all this. I've been drinking for a week. We've, we've had a, uh, a text in uh, from, uh, I don't know who it's from, you haven't said who it's from, but it says, obviously it's not cheating because she'll know it happened when he gets back. It's already happened. Obviously this raises many questions, but I have neither the space or the will. And then it's just trailed off. <laughs> See, the, the, the difficulty is, if, he's, if it's a week in the future and he goes back, yeah. then 
that's fine. But if he's going back, like you say, in 40 years' time... Yeah. That's cheating, then technically isn't it? she's cheating on him because he would be unrecognisable. If, you... if a man 40 years older than you suddenly walks into a room and claims to be your husband and you have sex with him, yeah. then, do you know what I mean? That's not on that. <laughs> see, but, <laughs> but see, that's the interesting thing. That's when it becomes sort of strange cheating, isn't it? But it's the same person. It's like that Ben Fold song. Um, and uh, there's a book called The Time Traveller's Watch. But the Ben Fold song, I forget which one it is, it's off the live album. Um, but that are luckiest. And there's a line, what if I... Yeah, so... The, the, if he if this old man had seen his future wife riding along on a bike when she was like twelve, would he still love her? And it's that sort of conundrum. Oh, I don't know. The main issue I've got is you know if they've they've forgotten the uh, the plane tickets, why if he's got a time machine, why are they taking a plane anyway? You're wasting money. You might as well just take the time machine, surely. It's a time machine, not a transporter. You can so still... you can travel to the future on holiday. Yeah, but you just find out that you're dead. And that. your house has been knocked over. That'd be a dreadful holiday, wouldn't it? Imagine the yeah. holiday snaps. This is us dead. This is our grave, look. We no. came and had a look at the grave. The that's kids me. haven't bothered to have it etched because we had a big falling out. That's little Tim getting... Dad eaten. walked out. That's little Tim getting eaten by a dinosaur when mummy presses the wrong buttons. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the ultimate book in the wrong holiday, isn't it? Dad was found in a field full of fruit. Yep. Um, someone texted <laughs> because in Because he was to on say, his way to a turkey party, you snooze, you lose. Travelling back in time to have sex with your younger wife, stop talking, expletive deleted. Oh, really? Clearly not enjoying the debate, but no. fortunately, spelt travelling with one L, it carries two. He's put your younger wife, you are, mm, and talking with no G. So I'll stop talking it if you stop texting it. Nice. So, it's so, not like he's run out. I, I don't mind people I love it. What's great, what's great is... That John doesn't listen to what they're saying. He finds fault with their <laughs> grammar. It's fantastic. Sounds like Jesus he just prattle to me. You've got to yes. be careful with the text message or it's going to erode language because these words, idiots will use them and they'll get put in dictionaries and soon the word Y-O-U-R will cease to exist and you'll be the old man saying, do you know, we used to have to spell Y-O-U-R, Y-O-U-R before all this you are nonsense. We've got uh, three texts here. As We've got uh, no, definitely not from Sue. Uh, absolutely not. It's the same person from uh, Dave and no, as long as it's the same wife. That's from Fat Fairy Cumbernauld Alba. I'm not sure if that's a place or three different names. Cracking title. Yeah, but it would be. Well, it sounds like some welcome to Fat Fairy Cumbernauld in Alba. Uh, but uh, Fat Fairy, that's with a PH. So she's uh, obviously like quite a rude boy fairy. Lab assistant. <laughs> if you like. Uh, I've got one here. This relates back to uh, my dad. My dad was uh, also born on the same day as Hitler Russell and is also an angry man. I feel your pain. That's from uh, Jen Hitler. Um, Got another one here. It's not from Jen. I'm merely pulling over his leg. That little smile he did there was really nice. You were so pleased with that one. Oh, you could thanks. see that coming. <laughs> the smirk just spread and spread and spread. Oh, I'm going to oh. say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And I naughty. Um, oh, talking about Cuddly Bob, sounds the sounds like the same town as every town in Somerset. Happy New Year. That's from Simon Weas in Glastonbury. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Sweet. Have we got any... Oh, we've got one here. This is uh, so some bloke sent a text in. Russell, did the posh sounding one out of your two mates do any of the voices in the comedy series Monkey Dust? No, I didn't. He sounds like the voiceover <laughs> man, Tim Cheltenham. John Richards and LA. Thanks, yeah. so Thanks, that's yeah. what he's on this show. Yeah. Um, right, um, Cuddly Bob. I think we're officially going to say no, he's not cheating. Is that right? Yeah, That's go back and do it for all of us. So, exactly. J- uh, Bob, if you're listening, go back, do your wife, you're fine, you're allowed to do her, and give her one for Sam and John. Am I right? Damn right. Uh, and John? Two for me. Two for John. <laughs> there you go. Because you'll be walking out in years to come. Yeah, exactly. We've had loads of texts in about Cuddly Bob's conundrum. Um, we, we, we've said no, everyone concurs pretty much. Um... We've got, uh, if you, uh, this is from uh, Matt w- uh, Whitby, it says, if you can get into a time machine and it only transports you 10 seconds into the future and breaks down, there are now two of you, do you both have an equal right to live? A bit awkward. Um, you'd have to shoot one of them. No, you kill the one in the past. Yeah. Because you're the future model. That's correct. Or just you pl- must have invented the time machine to have gone into the future. So the you in the past is an idiot. Yeah. I've got one if you want to say, just chip in, just shout. I've got one. If you shoot the person in the past, then you can't exist in the future because the past you is now dead. Yeah. Small oh, past no. past. Small past past. Yeah. no, because the past you is now existing in a separate time zone. Yeah, he's created a parallel universe. Yeah, time is. Te- he calls it John Land. Time <laughs> only continues linear for the individual. So there's one you that time is a linear motion. Whether you skip forward or not, your your time frame is a linear motion. You can do what you like. Here's an interesting one. Um, this is from Alexa. He may not be cheating her in a physical way, but he's actually cheating her by having fun all on his own. 
After uh, all, how much fun is it for a 20-year-old to have sex with a 40-year-old future husband? And if she doesn't know it's him, he might actually end up blaming her for cheating on him. So whichever way you look at it, the wife's losing. I like the first half of that text. Yep. That's, that's a real, that's a nice sentiment to say yeah. you're not allowed to have fun without your wife. It's lovely to believe that yeah. in this modern day you're still only half the person you might be if you meet someone else. Uh, <laughs> but then the second part, you get... Na the 20 and 40 year old thing she's saying yes obviously yeah. otherwise that's a whole different ball game isn't it if he's going back it's consensual yeah. sex oh, yeah, yeah. it's consensual yeah, no, there's nothing nothing yeah nothing even. below board yeah below board nice um someone here uh it's texting it's lynn in glasgow it happens at the end of austin powers 2 austin comes home and austin from 10 minutes goes in bed with heather graham so first austin joins in Oh, there we go. Um, this is quite good. This is uh, from Stephen Ellesmere, uh, Ellesmere Port. I'm going to try it in my local tonight on a girl I've had my eye on. I'm going to tell her I've come from next year where I'm her fella because she's dumped her. She's dumped because her? Because she's dumped hers. Oh, because, yeah. So basically what he's going to do is go, oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Hi, uh here from the future you need to get like a sort of you know like a drink with like dry ice coming from it and then <laughs> and everyone goes, where are you from <laughs> the future 2007 yeah exactly things uh, have gone fast yeah exactly i've come from australia <laughs> you might be wondering what my bodysuit is <laughs> yeah <laughs> my dad gave it to me for christmas these are tiny clocks this is what we wear in the future <laughs> what's that <laughs> this is an apple um <laughs> happy new year oh this is lovely this happy new year to all three of you uh well let's extend it thanks to, so yeah. let's extend it to nice the nation acknowledged in it son oh, this is a lovely I one i should say so uh, happy new year to all three of you it would not be sunday morning without reading the papers and listening to the show that's oh, pretty cool yeah. thanks, i'd love i'd love yeah she's lovely thanks to all of our mums <laughs> i'd love to be one of those to, to get up on a sunday and read the papers with like a pot of coffee with a hot bread that you've cooked imagine that <laughs> I'd, I'd never do I that. I love it when you do that. All fine, all fine. And then all of a sudden, something that, that is just so beyond the world of Russell Howard that it's it's laughable. I'd love to be one of those who gets up in the morning, paper, what I wrote and printed on my own thing, what I made. Oh, I don't make papers coffee anymore. Coffee from beans. I've been on a run to Africa in the morning, got the beans, <laughs> come back, ground them. And then I make bread out of uh, pixie dust. <laughs> But that's what I that's what you like on holiday, isn't it? Don't you find yourself you know when you're sort of on a beach or something, you go, Next year I'm gonna do all kinds of magic things. Like our friend uh, John, our flatmate Nobler, uh what was it, the three G's three G's on, on holiday, he 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 exclaimed to us, he went, Right when I get back from holiday, I'm going to be a new me. I'm going to work on guns. He was pointing at his muscles. Girls. And what was the third? Give up smoking. And give up smoking. And That is the New Year's resolution, isn't it, that one? What, give up smoking? Give up smoking oh, yeah. is the New Year's well, resolution. We're going to chat about I don't even smoke, and I'm going to give up yeah. tonight. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna start nicorette patches. Right. I'm going to work the... <laughs> Build yourself up. I, I swim against the tide, John. Try the gum first. Yeah. You very seldom hear somebody go, I'm going to get back on the smack. <laughs> but for, because last year was just boring. Yeah. I ballooned. And, <laughs> Not know, on this show, you don't. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see, see what you did there. Well done. Can I just interject with a text I had John. from uh, Sandra in North Kensington, yeah. who says, I'm with you on that argument, grammar and text language. The written word is eroding. Drives me mad, and she's put mad in capital letters, and then she's put grr with five R's and an exclamation mark. Sweet. Well, keep the text coming in. Uh, what we're going to do after uh, a bit of gold frat, which is Sam's choice, yeah. ride a white horse. Um, we're going to do <laughs> Am I Normal? No, that's your nickname. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that's what, God, that sounded horrific. Sam's Sam's half Mexican, and that doesn't it doesn't look good. I've got this is Sam's choice. Isn't that right? Ride a white horse, which says very little about his lady. You listen to uh, six music with me, Russell Howard. I'm here with John and Sam. The reason why oh. we're all laughing is because uh, I was at the gym yesterday, and a lady said something racist, and then words uh, tumbled out of my mouth that I don't normally use. And uh, one of them was, uh, yeah. If you've ever read Insomnia by Stephen King, check page nine to <laughs> how, find the word. How used. great would it be if somebody does that now and then they text in? And that's what I oh, called her. Dear. Really loud. <laughs> really loud. Um, so, uh, we've got a text here from Cathal in Belfast. <laughs> to answer all of your time travel questions, you can't travel in time, so stop going on about it. I know, cuz I'm a scientist. Spelt C U Z. She ain't a scientist. Yeah. Scientists don't speak like that. The reason we can't travel in. Time. We cannot travel. That, Why? Because they've stolen that word. That R has travelled into the future and ah. will come at any random moment. <laughs> oh, I just got it. <laughs> just got it in my mouth. Ratatouille. Oh. So. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's get on to Am I Normal, which this is, uh, like, let's be honest, this is the, one of our favourite bits of the show. It's the little, yeah. when we, because basically it, it, it came out of John's wonderful uh, OCD habits. 
We should have a highlights of this. Oh, yeah, imagine mm. that. Um, maybe at the end of a year, maybe. Do like a look back. Oh. No, I don't think anyone was doing that. When could we do it? Uh, anyway. So, John, what's your Am I North this week? Well, what's, this the little, one, what's the little habit you feel compelled to do? It's not really do? a habit. It's happened to me yesterday. Don't forget, you can text in yours on 64046 or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. We've got one already, actually, from Paul in London. After a big night out, my mate Dave gets drunk again when he takes a morning poo. Is he normal? Probably not. John, what's yours? I'm still so- thinking about that one. Is he implying he gets drunk from the fumes of the stool? Or... Probably not, mate. I wouldn't have thought. That's a. So he, he drinks while on the toilet. Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's a horrific image. I don't do, get, all this debate about. Uh, they did this on Five Live yesterday. What do you do when you're on the toilet? But it shouldn't take that long. You shouldn't be doing anything. Yeah, totally with you. Job in hand. Super Califragilis. <laughs> exactly. Job in hand. That's why he's getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, you just sing Super Califragilis. Yes, we have to know. She's. <laughs> Yeah. Spoonful of sugar as well and a few apples. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's flipping hell. That's an orchard. Now, am I normal, right? No. No, no, clearly not. Do you know when you go into, like, autopilot and you just do stuff that you do every day and you just drift off and then you sort of come <laughs> yes. to in the middle of it and you haven't... I was having a wee yesterday, oh, right? Oh, God, where's this going? I was having a wee and I hadn't... Int- uh, I, I pay yeah. a lot oh. of attention in everyday life. Every second I'm, you know, risk assessing the next second of my life. Yeah. So I don't do anything on autopilot. When I do, I get angry at myself because that's how accidents happen. Yes. I was having a wee and I suddenly thought... Oh, God, I'm weeing. Because I hadn't thought, oh, it's all right, you're going for a wee. So I just assumed I was wetting myself. Yep. And I wasn't. I was in the toilet. Yep. But I'll have that. That'll happen in the shower as well. I'll be in the shower and i think, oh, God, I'm soaking wet. Everyone's going to laugh at me. Because I, I realise I've just got in the shower without thinking about it. And I hate that. You should think about everything. Flipping hell. Am I normal? No, you're not. What's <laughs> you, you're not normal if you come to weeing. I don't mean like come to. I don't make a noise and go, and then look at the man next to me. I just suddenly go, oh, God, I'm weeing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Weeing's one of those things that you want That dog is in the toilet. I'm in trouble. <laughs> you want to know when you're weeing. That's what I'm saying. Of course you do. Everyone does. But you, you, you don't think about it. You don't when have you, to. It's weeing. As soon as you start just weeing and mm-hmm. you're not really thinking about it, you're going to start weeing yourself. Hey, on on a similar note, my friend Rob, when he's at work, he uh, when he uh, goes for a number two, he adds up how much money he's earning whilst defecating, and he worked out the other day six pound thirty the other day. He uh, he earned whilst, in uh, one, yeah, in a sitting. Yeah, he does all right. He's got quite a good job. I bet he has. Yeah. Well, very <laughs> People can figure out how much money he earns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. mm, he's doing quite well. Um, what about you, Sam? What's your amateur? Well, it's it's basically that I get angry whenever somebody who I don't like likes the same music as me, which is basic snobbery. Yeah, but that weird. really gets me. me and we're going to be full of support here, Six Music, mm. yeah, Shrine I, to Music Snobbery. But. I went to see the uh, the Strokes at uh, Ali Pali ages ago. It was really great. But it's really interesting when you, you see the kind of people that like the music you love and it, you can't help but go, oh, no. But it's yeah. horrible. You shouldn't think like that. No, but that's the beauty of music. But you can't help yourself getting really... like you hear somebody, you know, say, oh, I went, I went to see Westlife. They were great. It's the first thing I did, popped out, bought the new Damien Rice. Amazing. It's yeah, just yeah, wrong. Yeah. It's... Which is it's a great album, the Damien Rice mm. one. They're good. Um, I went to see Outcast, and I found exactly that. Yeah. All middle-class white women. And yeah. I thought, you're not in touch with the Hey Ya vibe. No, they, exactly. Do you not get there saying Hey Ya? Do you well, not understand? Well, they were in the middle of Hey Ya, and this voice just shouted out, I'm weighing! <laughs> <laughs> I'm bloody weighing! <laughs> Am Which I is, normal? It's fine at a gig, isn't it? That's what people do at gigs, do it in bottles and chocolate. Yeah, allegedly. Well, that's what 50 Cent, um, my friend Fiddy, Al Pitcher. Please. Fiddy, uh, My friend Al Pitcher, who's a brilliant comic, uh, has got a very funny right. story. Apparently somebody uh, did, a, <laughs> did a poo into a bottle and threw it at 50. Which is real effort, isn't it? That's 50 not f- miles an hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's not throwing... That's actually going to the effort. I hate this. What are you going to do about it? Throw your muck now. I'm going to poo into a bottle. I'm going to shut that bottle and then throw it out. Maybe that's how ships get into bottles as well. Who knows? All the people down the front really liked him as well. It was unfortunate because there was spray from the bottle. And uh, Just apparently the, the defecant hit the fan. <laughs> you listen yeah, to I wish I hadn't done that. I wish we were on Radio 4 at this moment and I was Nicholas <laughs> Parsons, because then I could go, good one, here's... Oh, they have music. But anyways, we're having fig rolls here in the no, studio. No, yeah. no, no. I like a fig roll. I like dunking a fig... Um, to be honest, there isn't a biscuit I don't like dunking uh, into tea, but I have to... I don't really like a biscuit um, unless I've dunked it. 
No. Which could be my Am I Normal, but it's not really. What is your Am I Normal? Thanks, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Mine this week, I've got a few. Um, I'm quite jealous of kids who not eat in nice restaurants. You know, you see like a six year old in uh, like eating sushi. I saw a six year old eating sushi the other day and got really arsy with it. Well, not with him, and it started shouting at him, What are you doing? Um, but you shouldn't be doing that when you're six. You should be you're excited. Kids, oh, my friend Andy said that at the Edinburgh Festival this year. Um, you saying, festival? Yeah, the festival. That? Oh. That's a different thing. It's where the uh, award nominees go. And uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we were chatting about it, and uh, he was just saying it's really... Because his, his uh, wife is pregnant, she's due soon, actually, and he was saying his kid's going to have a mango quite soon. Uh and it's just that weird thing that, like, when I was a kid, all I did was eat food at Harvester twice a year, and you were seen as, like, a <laughs> god when you arrived with tell of the salad bar and croutons and all this kind of thing. Whereas now, you see, like, kids in Wagamama. It really annoys me. I, I mean, it's pathetic. Croutons. You hate croutons? Mm. <laughs> no, you shouldn't call them that. The other worst ones are the ones you get in, like, powdered soups. Yeah. What's that point in putting croutons in them? A good crouton, fine, like a Parmesan-topped one. But just horrible, dry... Mind you, last night after the gig, because you eat rubbish over Christmas, I wanted to cook myself something, but I was in a hotel. So I got a packet of smash oh. and a tin of corned beef. And I boiled the kettle and stood the tin of corned beef on the kettle so it heated through in the tin and then mixed it in with the smash. It was like a homemade corned beef hash. You're listening to Lonely Hour. <laughs> <laughs> Match um, of the day, Newcastle Brown. I'm not lonely. No, that sounds uh, great. That's how everyone wants to live their life. <laughs> Eating out of a teacup with a teaspoon. Yeah. Well, with, with two lesbians frolicking <laughs> next door. <laughs> what a life you lead. Oh, how fantastic is that? They're there and they're naked, you know, like fighting, having lesbian fun. Again, you've added all this, but yeah, fair enough. That's the way I'm envisioning it. And there's you in Mardi room next door eating bloody... Like me out of a <laughs> pot, like some beast. Well, that ad lib fell short, and that's a punishment for your little arrogant awards jibe earlier, <laughs> well. Mr. Nominated uh, 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 Comic. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I've got one uh, Am I Normal? This is from Anna, although the email is from Mark Huckabee, which implies Anna's on Mark's email address. Does he know? Dun, dun, dun. Um, it says, Am I Normal? I'm a 33 year old woman. Every night yes. as I'm. <laughs> yes. I'm a. <laughs> I'm a 33-year-old woman. Maybe that's her thing. She has to start everything she says by saying I'm a 33-year-old <laughs> woman. Do you like Smash? I am a 33-year-old woman. Yes. She's actually 52 now. I just can't stop saying it. She's a 33-year-old woman. Every night as I am washing my face, I have to open one eye and check my reflection to see whether I've turned into a werewolf. I've done this without fail from the age of 10 after my older brother made me watch American Werewolf in London. That's great. I don't necessarily believe in this self-fulfilling prophecy, but... <laughs> One day you're going to see something and she's going to be frightened. Because as women get older, they get furrier. <clears throat> Am I wrong? That's a fair point. They don't yeah. turn into wolves, though. She, you know, just to put her at ease. But when she... that first hair comes out, that's what she's going to think's happening. That what would be really great is if her brother knows this, when that first hair appears, he just goes. Bah, da, 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 da. <laughs> that's the best scene in, in any film ever, that. When he is turning into a wolf, he can't believe it. Michael J. Fox in Team Wolf, he's turning into a wolf in his butt, and he's sat there going, This is, oh my God, he's terrified. Bow, now, 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 now. Pulls all them gibby faces. Many of the faces I've subsequently. That's the kind of face I, I must pull at babies when they cry at me. And then he tells his dad, his dad makes him. You know, open the door, he's turned into a wolf, he opens the door, and his dad's a wolf. His dad is a grey old wolf, and never is he... There are better... He should have said, this is going to happen to you and change. But he just looks like this dreary old wolf. It's a great film, Teen you Wolf. You think that much about Teen Wolf, and there's still a part of you that believes one day you'll bait your own bread. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. This, Teen Wolf's a, for not all 80s cinema. Nothing you can't learn about. It's fantastic. You're in love with a fish, whatever. Fancy a mannequin, don't we all? Uh, we've read a, a text here I'm trying to find from a, a Dutch lady. Um, oh, yeah, Sylvie, Sylvie Schreenen. She probably won't listen anymore. Is that how you pronounce it? She says, Sylvie Schreen, brackets, I don't think you're able to pronounce my name. It's Dutch from the Netherlands. As John pointed out, she's probably watching porn and half baked. <laughs> I, I didn't that. say that, Sylvia. I said you're, you sounded great. And I said you're probably looking at tulips riding your bike and stuff like that, thinking about Anne Frank, that John said it was doobies and porn. Um, her am I normal is that she likes walking the stairs with her right foot. Oh, excellent. So if I've climbed some of the stairs, more often I know with which foot I have to start to end with my right foot. If I have to turn around when I'm halfway up the stairs, I have to count the steps. I have to make sure I end up with my right foot again. 
you're in no position because I found you in our flat climbing up the stairs just using your hands. And when I said, what are you doing? You went, I'm really bored. I said, I can see that. Testing my upper body strength. I said, what are you doing? He said, I was seeing what it would be like to climb upstairs if I had no legs. (laughs) To which I pointed out, would you live upstairs? And he admitted it was a fair point. I said, yes, I would, because you'd (laughs) still have to have the biggest room, which is downstairs. (laughs) Mm. Um, have you got any ammo normals? Uh, I have to eat polos and twos from Jim in Pompey. <laughs> God, that sounded like, hello, I have to eat polos. That was the poshest you've ever sounded, Sam. Oh, I'm pleased. He's angling for that voiceover work after that oh, text. This guy's before. fantastic, right? This is Dave Block, which sounds like a, yeah, a good name. Um, <laughs> oh, this is really, lo- I love the show, makes me laugh. Thanks very much. Um, anywho, I love that. I love saying anywho. It's one of my favourite words to say. He says, I'm almost as OCD as John. When I wake up in the morning, everything has to follow the correct sequence from washing of body parts in the shower, hands, yeah. hair, hands, arms, body, legs, feet, hands, face, hands again, to cleaning my ears with two equal length cotton buds. Whilst I'm scrubbing, I also hum or sing, depending if I think it's going to be a great day. He has to sing the A team theme tune. I can't remember when it started, but if I don't follow the same steps, Steps each morning, say the cotton buds are not the equal length. I have been known to discard the buds if they do not meet regulation symmetry. It really knocks him off his stride. Do his body parts again. Yeah. Hands. Slowly. Hands. Oh. Slowly, okay. Your hands are getting done naturally because you're it, cleaning yourself. I'll do it slowly and sexy for you, right? Like it's me doing it. Hands. Uh, hair. <laughs> <laughs> Leave yourself alone. <laughs> <laughs> hands, hair. Hands again. Got to do hair early doors because you rub the shampoo and conditioner in, then leave it while you do the rest. Just put some on my arms. Mm-hmm. Arms, good. Body, legs, feet, hands again. Face. Hands again. Hands again. That's what I'm not happy about. He's got a problem with his hands. Captain Winkle. This guy's a weirdo. <laughs> You've added Captain Winkle, haven't you? Hands again. Captain Winkle, hands again. <laughs> I'm going to get this out of my hand. 16-year-old girls all over the world already searching on listening again for that bit. I imagine that, yeah. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, oh, be really cool, though, wouldn't it? Some, what? Some girl having a lady fit all over me, imaginary washing myself. Have a go. You do it yourself, Sam. Wash yourself. <laughs> go on. Face, 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 <laughs> face, <laughs> arm, face, face. <laughs> he doesn't say much, but when he does, there's a great story about Steve Martin. Apparently, he does that. He does what you do at uh, Hollywood parties. He lingers in silence, and then when he comes in, bang, big laugh. John, you wash yourself. Um, same as same as your man there. Top to hair, 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 hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then top to bottom. But you've got to step out of the flow of water to lather yourself up. That's normal, isn't it? You don't that- lather yourself under the water because it's washing off straight away. Unless you've got a squeegee. I can think of no better way to introduce Come Together <laughs> by the Beatles. John, what, squeegeeing himself. Here's a nice ammo normal from Dewey Newman. Uh, <laughs> I have a crush on a shop mannequin. I know this sounds silly, but she really does look gorgeous. She's in the window of a well-known department store in Manchester and is currently wearing a nightgown. <laughs> Little tease. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. She, she's clearly up for it. She looks around the age of 21 to 25, not too certain. And it's so good looking, the store uses her all year round with different clothes to reflect the season. Summer is good when she has on the swimming costumes. Am I normal? Regards, Dewey from the Manchester area. I say, Dewey, go for it. Um, you've, you've seen the film Mannequin. It, it's all going to be fine. You've, what you want to do is get a big gay black man to help you. Uh, <laughs> He's, he's, you've got to find yourself a big gay, gay black man. Uh, if someone's just listening now, look, what, what's going on? In, in terms of mannequin, he'll help you. He'll use a hose to power off Commandant Lassard, and it'll all be fine. You'll be like mannequin, just with Manchester. Hey, do it from behind. I'm doing it. I oh, don't show your mates. But, you know, yes, it'll be fine. Have a relationship. Take her out places. Take her to KFC. You know, don't take her flash places. You know, but build up. Take her to the Ritz. Have a relationship. It's going to be great. I can, I can, I'd see of no reason why it's not going to work. It's going to end in him being dragged horribly out of Debenhams by a security guard who is going to be very, very angry. That's where your big gay black man comes in handy. <laughs> Get away from him! Thanks, mate. And off to KFC. John, you're not talking. Yeah, I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. Oh, how great is that? You laughed after you said a funny thing. Very rarely do that. I laughed because we all laughed, and I thought it'd sound better oh, it was on great. the radio. It was really no, great. I'm enjoying myself. Well, yeah, it was a smack. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> too much. That was a bit. That was a bit yeah. too much. I'm learning though. Learning. Although it's really, it's a shame this is a radio show. Um, because it is a shame. It's because if you could see John's face when he smiles, he looks like Barry Chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> when he's uh, hey, I tell you what. That's to you though. To me, I look like something. Oh, oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> oh. Super duper. So it's New Year's Eve. God, I'm good. Who's excited about this? Yeah, I'm a bit like that. Uh, I just find it a bit like... I normally do gigs, but I'm not tonight. Um, Glad to be working. You're uh, at the Birmingham Glee. If you yeah. want to pop down and see Barry Chuckle in action, yeah. uh, he's on at the Birmingham Glee, but it's too much money, to be honest. Um, sold out, mate. Is it? Yeah. There I are... don't think the late show's sold out, but I'm not on at that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's not get into that. Sam, what do you think of New be... Year's in general? It's it's never quite Christmas. That's the problem. You, you, you start coming down... Well, you don't actually start coming down from Christmas, but it just can't match that sort of Christmas yeah. vibe. It's... it's it's a shame, isn't it? Because you have those moments when, like, New Year's Eve for me is always, <coughs> always been really depressed at all the stuff that you haven't done and all the places you want to go and see. And it's just a reminder. Like, and to be honest, I've, I've, I normally watch, like, Jules Holland or Jonathan Ross on telly and just kind of, I've had some really odd moments in the past where I've just, like, cried up in my bedroom and stuff like that. But, you know, I think this year I'll just be on my own. Jules Holland's gone downhill, I'll give you that. <coughs> it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the hard one it used to be. Yeah. Nanny. They never read out my points of view to Terry Wogan. <laughs> I've got one cry. here from Russell Howard. Dear, ooh, ooh. Well, that was mainly because he was at the New Forest um, yeah. at the Radio 2 party. So has it been a good year, 2006? What's been your highlights? <coughs> I don't really do hide. That's the thing. That's why you get depressed at New Year. It makes you realise the futility of achieving stuff because yeah. everything you achieve makes you think you can achieve more. When mm. you just, I, I saw something very nice at the start of the year that is the last time I've felt nice about people. I watched a kid in a carvery restaurant. It was quite a pikey carvery restaurant. The Peace Haven in Brighton. It's nice. It's cheap. Good. Good food. Yeah. On the coast as well. Look out to sea. Eat uh, cheap vegetables. But there's a there's a please wait to be seen. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'm gonna have to hold you there. Look out to John see. hold me there. You know what happens. Look out to see and eat cheap vegetables. Yeah. Come to Brighton. Do continue. It's not quite Brighton. It's Peace Haven, which is just along the coast. But what you do, <laughs> Brighton, terrible parking. Head out to the Peace Haven. Have a car. Right? On your way back in, call at the cinema. Uh, watch a film. Just on your way back in, free parking. Walk into town along the beach. What's anyway, the thing, what's the thing you saw? Uh, kid, right? Family come into the thing, and there's a there's a sign that says "Please wait here to be seated." And the family would not go past it, so the kid burst through because he didn't care. And his family just wouldn't. They were so strong by society that they couldn't walk past the sign because they knew everyone would look. And the kid went over to the uh, they have the big desk full of condiments and held his hands over the top. And you you've got to go there as a parent. You've got to go and get the kid. But they didn't. They just watched him and they were calling him to come back. And the look in his eyes, I've never seen it before. He knew he was going to get in trouble, but he wasn't cheeky. It was almost a, like a rite of passage for him. He looked them in the eyes and he said, you know I'm going to do this and you know I have to do this and we're all learning something. And just put one hand in the mint sauce and one hand in the horseradish. <laughs> And it was like, usually that. I, I, nowadays, if I saw that, and only a year on, I would probably go and kick that kid myself. But at the time, I was quite happy and I, I enjoyed the whole shebang. That's there was power. a shebang afterwards with the sauce, and oh, it went mental. <laughs> see, it's the little things, isn't it? It's fantastic. I'd like to see. I, I'm a bit like that as well. If you saw, if you see sauces, you've got to put your hands in them, haven't you? Not, I mean, we not come at from, your age. Yeah, you do. We come from very different worlds, you and me. What's been, that's been your highlight of 2006, watching a boy put his hands in mint sauce. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Mm, interesting. That I and like, career and blah, blah, blah. I, I went to Hong Kong. That was my highlight. I loved it in Hong Kong. The, I, I haggled for the first time in my life with a lady who had no teeth uh, over a chess set. Which over I, a teeth set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> how much do you want it? <laughs> Give me back. No, how much do you want it? <laughs> Give please. <laughs> please. I can only eat vegetables. And I long of Brighton. Um, no, I said... Um, it was for a chess set, and I thought I'd get it, and um, it's like $40, and I went, nah, $30, and she went, uh, $40, and I went, $25, and she looked at me and said, don't bust my balls, <laughs> and I just, I gave did her, she? she honestly did, swear on my life, she looked at me and said, don't bust my balls, and smiled with no teeth, two cigarettes in her mouth while she said it. Brilliant. Uh, I gave her 40 straight away. One and for the rest of the day, whenever I got bored, I would say in her voice, don't bust my balls, and laugh. <laughs> you Brilliant. bought a chess set. She's seen you coming. <laughs> I love chess. 
I'm a, ch- I'm a chess connoisseur. I like the summer. The summer was good. Watching the yeah, I will play that in a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, playing the, uh, the, the watching the World Cup was great. That was oh, a really yeah. happy time because you it was stuff was always around the corner. So it's like we'd be in Bristol, kind of go. Well, let's go for a walk, do some stuff, <laughs> play a bit of tennis, th- that kind of fun. And then we get and when we get back, we'll watch that game. Then we got that game. Then we got that game. It's great, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, good. You never went for a walk. I did. Me and Nobler went for a walk to look at ladies in bikinis. So that shows what you know. We're uh, talking about 2006, our highlights, your highlights, that kind of thing. Uh, we've got a few in. F- we we did. We finished Am I Normal, but these uh, these are two texts we've had in. Uh, I refuse to get on the front carriage of trains because in the event of a crash, it's always the front carriage that sustains the most damage. That's nice and uplifting. And uh, when I'm stuck behind a slow car or a tractor, I find myself swerving from left to right in the same one that Formula One drivers do on the warm-up lap, going, meow, meow. I wrote that. <laughs> I wrote that down. And send it to the show. That's sad, isn't it? Right. What? Uh, what was your hi- Nah. What was your highlight of 2006, Amy? Ah, uh, simple. Meeting Hasselhoff. Did you? Yeah, he's had a CD out, which I consider a personal failure that it didn't make it to number one. I bought two singles, wasn't enough. And he, he was in HMV signing his CD and his book. Was he covered in his own urine? He, he played the crowd, I tell you. Came on, arms out, outstretched, Christ-like. And, and then late, Yeah, kind of. Well, he knew what the crowd wanted. He had his leather yeah. jacket on. I bet he stinks uh, yeah. of old ham. He was sober. I Brute. thought that was great. Yeah, Brute for him. Oh. Yeah, he did stink a bit, but I mean, he he certainly worked the cameras. You put a camera phone anywhere near him, he sort of, his face would snap back into this grin and and the two fingers would kind of point out and he froze there for a good five seconds before immediately snapping back to the signing sort of uh, pose that he had. Wonderful man. He's got problems with photos. (laughs) Whenever (laughs) whenever a camera, his teeth just... It's great on He's become very cool, hasn't he? Everyone's like the half and stuff like that. It's like being in the 80s again, I suppose. He must yeah. have been cool then. He must have been. We had some really nice uh, emails in from people's uh, highlights of 2006. We've um, got one here uh, that was... Oh, yeah. My, this is from Dan Atkinson. He's a friend of ours in London. Uh, my favourite thing from 2006 was seeing a goose fall over. I'm looking forward to seeing other birds fall over in 2007. Who isn't? Should go and see the roly-polies. That's a fair point. Watching a penguin fall over is always good. They always do those... <coughs> There's always something uh, in the sun, isn't it, that... Uh, uh, whenever a plane goes over penguins, yeah. they tip backwards, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and then they always show in the sun pictures of the penguins falling over. Like you can't possibly comprehend without a, a, a diagram. Oh, that's how penguins fall over. I didn't know. Thanks, son. That's all right. Um, so Is that how the sun talks. It is. I, I imagine the sun's a bit more aggressive. Than oh, that. Listen to this. Yeah, tits and fear. Get it down here. Yeah. Lovely. Oi, oi. Uh, favourite moment. This is from Bex in Peterborough. Her favourite moment of 2006 was Reading Festival. It was the best weekend of her year. Have you got any others, lads? I was going to read Dan's and Bex's. <laughs> what was your favourite moment 2006? Uh, this is from Chris in Malta. Breaking up from school and meeting new people. That's exciting, isn't it? Breaking up from school. Mm-hmm. Those years are gone for us. Ten years since I was at school. God. So exciting, wasn't it? When you, when you, when leaving Ugh. school, what's wrong with you? What? It's sort of a joke. Too late. What, what were you going to say? Damn it! No, it doesn't work now because everyone goes. Oh, has to be there. Bang! Rubbish. <laughs> okay. Learned a valuable lesson now. I'll know for next time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, oh, this is really lovely. This is from uh, uh, what's his name? If I can find it. Uh, Richard Cooper Knight in Worthing. Favourite moment of 2006, my partner and I deciding on Valentine's Day to get married. 2007, what he's looking forward to. September the 22nd, the big day itself when they're getting married. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Getting married. I'd love to get married. Um, what? Are you angling? <laughs> for what? You look like you're waiting for one of us to propose. No! Civil partnerships, it's all the rage. Hey, I tell you what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I was passing, no, yeah, right through Bob, so as it was. Um, we, uh, I was driving to Gloucester to meet my mate Rob, and on the way, there's this big hotel with a massive billboard in Gloucester in the middle of like, Arr! that says, we do civil partnerships here. It's really great, like, like drive-bys. <laughs> so you're driving on. But yeah, I didn't think they did that sort of thing in Gloucester. Oh, everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah, Oh, Crystal. all over. Good. Uh, have you got an ease? One. Uh, her favourite moment of 2006 was Who's going favorite? to see... It's a woman it who may matter. or may not be called Ninette, but... That's my uh, mum! My favourite moment of 2006 was going to see my son Russell at the theatre in London, so I could hardly contain myself as I wanted to run up to the stage and shout, 
He's my son. And yeah. Please save that for the DVD. Do that. She yeah. did. I did the uh, I did the Garrick, um, and it, which was just ridiculous. It was really good fun. Um, but this is the first time my mum seen me do stand up. It's like this massive theatre. <laughs> she came up to me afterwards. The first thing she said, I, I enjoyed it so much. I wanted to run up and down, screaming, going, "He's my son! He's my son!" Well, and thank God she didn't. Anyone oh, no. who goes to see Russell in future should know that that joke's even funny if you're not actually his mum. So yeah. I'll do that in the middle <laughs> of a gig. <laughs> If you're a man, even better. Yeah, like that bit in Spartacus. No, I'm his mum. <laughs> no, I'm his mum. Um, I've only got one mum. She's lovely, but she does buy weird presents. Clogs? What are you thinking? We're talking about the highlights of 2006 and what we're looking forward to 2007, that kind of stuff. We've got one here from Arthur Vandelay. What a name that is. Highlight of the year for me had to be my friend Debbie slipping on a banana skin at the slow food market in Bristol. The slow food market? Oh dear! Like vegetables that can't. No, no. It's Ooh. the opposite of fast food. It's a cracking idea. Is it? Have, have you been there? I read all about it last year, but I was away when it was on. Ah, oh, that'd be great. That's always funny. But given that we've talked about apples, slipping on a banana means something very different on this show. <laughs> That's correct. Um, and we're we're doing that. So text in six four zero four six or email russell dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk with your New Year's resolutions. We're going to do that. Anything about New Year's Eve? What you think about it? Whether you're a fan? Uh, what you're doing tonight? We're, we're generally we're not really into it, are we? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, anything else to add about New Year's Eve? You know Let's have the belter. Let's stop messing around. Oh. What is it this week? I've sat through enough monosyllabic you, songs. Hey, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people who've uh, only just got uh, digital radios this Christmas. Uh, they're an excellent purchase, and you probably don't know what the 100% better is. John, tell them. It's a good song. That's it. It's a really, it's my favourite songs. This one, I was in Riley's the other day shooting some pools with the guys. <laughs> you and John? No, n- uh, my other mates. Mm. No, it was with John, but I have been to Riley's twice this week and we're different friends, so I've got loads, so you can eat it. We're talking about New Year's resolutions and that and New Year's Eve and blah de and what we're up to. Uh, what are you up to, Sam? What's your resolution, actually? My resolution is that I think we've got to find a nemesis for the show. I think we've got to find <laughs> somebody who's an arch enemy. It's got to be done. You've already got that, Ken Bruce. Ken Bruce, yeah. I, oh, well, we no, could. I'm not having Ken Bruce. Yeah, you see, this is what Screaming I knew would Ken happen. Bruce. It was McConey that grassed us up. Yeah, McConey. Now we could take Bruce, he's on side. Who's our nemesis? I quite like the idea of uh, like a ne- nemesis. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, the only sort of nemesis I've got is a lady called Mrs. Vos, who like <laughs> for, brought my friend Rob's mum. Whenever there was a brief time, when I brought, there was a weird noise that appeared. I see, I say Mrs. Vos, and a ghost appears, right? But uh, I got caught. Um, like I went for a stage, like making a fall out of myself. The the main example was my friend Rob lit my um, uh, anal hair. Um, and it's the only time in my life that my rectum's been ablaze and she caught me in her front room being held down, pinned down by all my mates with uh, my arse on fire. Well, Texts are flooding in on 64046. Beautiful song, dot. Love it, two exclamation marks. Love that song, exclamation mark. Love it. Shut up, Russell. Jan in Cheltenham, JX. Okay, Get we, him. we've got some more songs here that said, Woo, love Ooey. <laughs> What's that Stop curly... Stop making up text messages. What's that curly freak on about? Ooey is the best song I've ever heard. I love Ooey. My name's Nate Dog. I'm going to come down there and kill him. <laughs> Just leave him here, listeners, because he'll carry on making up, then he'll run out, and this will oh, really peter lovely. out. You called them listeners. How lovely is that? <laughs> I was like, you were sat near a log fire. Well, now, now, now I've got some people on side. I thought it was me against you, but now it turns out it's us against you, and no, that's better. It turns out I've got 197,000, you've got four. Simon in Teddington, Nick in Newquay says no exclamation No, mark. yeah. He's actually put new pui and he spelled it <laughs> N-E-W-P-U-A-Y. So too much surfing uh, he and lives smoking, in new pui. smoking <laughs> doobries and having ease of an evening. Oh, yeah. And waking up and going down the surf because I'm actually 23, but I'm actually 48. As opposed to Grow you up weeping into new washing pui. up. My, my sister has texted loving Mark Knopfler. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Well, you can all... Yeah. Oh, he's oh, well, stolen it. Finally, gone. it's happened. Okay. Ladies right, and gentlemen, I'll you're listening that. to the. Ju- oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I'm, I'm up for that. <laughs> oh, you're listening to Happy Hour with me, John Richardson. <laughs> if you did this show on your own, it would just be you. It would end up. I mean, it'd be brilliant fun, but it'd be a very different show because it would end up with you after three hours going, Right, so am I getting my government gun to shoot people or what? <laughs> because this world is full of dickheads, right? And I am going to shoot. I'm allowed to say it. it's my show. Don't you touch me. I'm John Richardson. <laughs> That's what it'd be like. That's you need exactly me. What it'd be we like. need happiness and bleakness. And Sam, I'm happy. Yeah, come just on. Just not for no reason. I don't just laugh at Rice Krispies. 
Well, no, do I? Yes, I laugh. you do. I, no, Come on, I laugh. let's be honest. Wait. There's days you've poured those into the bowl and you've thought, hmm, snack, papple and pop. What a stupid name. Snap, crackle and pop, not papple. Papple um, the way you say it. It isn't, mate. Uh, the thing that makes <laughs> me laugh about Rice Krispies is popping them into your little slippers. That's funny. <laughs> exactly, just hearing you go, ah, oh, morning, put me feet. Oh, no. The monster. Where's me gun? That's what makes me laugh. Amongst other things. Now, what's your resolution then, J. Joe? J. Joe. Poor song, someone's texted in. Yeah. Thanks for playing a decent track rather than another bunch of indie chanters. Personally. Oh, this is kicking off. God, I'm doing this everywhere. This is good for my self-esteem. It's, yeah, but it's bad for the show because he'll just read that. So um, t- mine, I'm not doing New Year's resolutions. Why? I don't believe in them. And if you've got something you want to do, just do it. And, it, you know, it, it, the very fact that you need the calendar to click over to install you with enough confidence to achieve a goal means you probably aren't going to go through with it anyway. If you really want to do it, you'll do it any time. And the ones I hate the most are the pointlessly vague ones like do something every day that frightens you. Oh, yeah. You might as well just do something every day that hurts. Yeah. Pointless. It's the same thing. I never used to get it. Our dad used to line us up um, and say, so what are you going to do for New Year's <laughs> like self-improvement? And I'm pretty sure my, my answer up until the age of 10 was become a Jedi. And uh, I haven't really, you know, I, I'm still, don't laugh. But You've got the mind powers down. Yeah. Mm, I have to say the force is strong with them. <laughs> but my, my brother was always eager to please my dad. So be like, well, um, age eight, probably try and organise my time management a little bit better. And my dad, right, excellent, you go into good corner. Carry what you I'm going to become a princess. Brilliant, well done. Jedi. I'm going to become a Jedi, something like that. Never worked, but, you know, I don't give up hope. So that's still in there. I want to become a Jedi. Um, <clears throat> I want to go to Peru and New York. I fancy that. And I want to go to Finland. You know they're quite a distance away from each other, don't you? Yeah, I'll do it in two weekends. And, <laughs> and uh, I quite fancy... Uh, what else do I fancy doing? Get, just doing loads of stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's quite weird, it's weird though, isn't it? Because we live... You know, I mean, here we are doing a show on New Year's Eve. This is fa- fantastic. It's brilliant fun. You know, having like loads of emails and texts in from people. So this, it's that weird thing. This time last year we weren't doing this and we're now doing it. So you can't really go... Uh, there's not really there's there's nothing else I want to do in life. It's really sad. Do you know what I mean? I've pretty much I do everything I want, which is pretty weird. But it makes you think there has to be something bad coming around the corner for me. I'll probably get hit by a truck tomorrow. So we're talking about 2006, 2007, New Year's resolutions and all that. What have you got, Sammy? Well, somebody setting in because it's that thing of like January, everyone gets the blues, don't they? Everyone gets a little bit depressed. Mm. What's weird about it is you find yourself at Christmas, all the uh, all the shops are full of hey, festive fun. Here's a way to cook your turkey and all kinds of stuff. And you know, it's all about kind of you know overindulging and stuff like that. And then you sort of go back at January, and all the shops have turned on you. Oi, fatty, lose some weight, <laughs> and all these celebrities bring out these vacuous videos. And then you've got the inevitable back to school. But have you just... seen any of those? Have you seen any of the celebrity get fit videos? Are they hideous? They're really funny. There was a one with... Who's that one that looks like a man at a Coronation Street? Um, Ken Barlow. No. the I'm not sure what her name is. She's meant to be like... She's like a sexy old lady, but she just looks like a man. Um, Have you seen Michelle McManus's? Has M- Michelle McManus got one? Mm-hmm. What's that? I think it's... I was big, now I'm moderately big. You two can be <laughs> moderately big, which is, is an admirable sentiment. <laughs> is it really that? <laughs> it's genuine. Excellent. You two can be moderately big. Is that in uh, music career or uh, waste? Ooh! <laughs> la, 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 <laughs> This should be a, uh, a Gordon Ramsay one. We're thinking this, like the swear diet. You know, you just get up, you say, in the morning, have two Fs before breakfast, before you know it, the white flies off. He swears well, too much. Let's release the Russell Howard Christmas fitness video. Yeah. It's a 19-minute workout. Because, mm. to be honest, 20, you're getting bored, aren't you? Well, let's release the John Richardson workout. <laughs> that would be great. Imagine, I would, I would pay money to see you do a five DVD. Minutes, five minutes cake punching. No, it wouldn't. The Russell be... Howard diet. Okay, well, yours With would just be... With gloves on, because you're too weak to punch a cake. <laughs> then we... five minutes swimming to wash the cake off, then ten minutes smelling yourself. Yep. Okay. Well, yours would be just you in a gym going, a two, three, four, stretch, two, three, four. Whoa. What are you doing, Michael? Michael's your mate helping out. Is he? One, two, three. Two, three, four. Imagine. Are you wearing odd socks? Somebody fetch me Winnie the Pooh. Why are the noises appearing? Why are the noises appearing? Never count into a stretch. You shouldn't bounce on a stretch. Just yeah. go down and hold it. Nah. 
<laughs> Sam's. And then have a stretch. <laughs> Sam's fitness workout would just be you. Just, hi, red wine? Slips down good, doesn't it? Hey, let's throw a brick at a duck. <laughs> All right. Ten minutes time. You don't, We're going to be nailing weight. a cat to a telegraph yeah. post. You don't lose weight, you just lose days at a time. <laughs> just come, hey, oh, that'd be great. If you really push this stretch far enough, you'll find yourself waking up in three days going, am I weeing? That's when you know <laughs> that your weight is flying off with me, John Richardson. I also have a show on Radio 6 where we play nothing but dire straits for people who wear chinos. Bit of, bit of viciousness coming in now. Bit of anger. But we're the nearly at the end of the show as well. lost the argument have started I tell you what, in. One of my favourite things about 2006 has been doing this show. Hey? Oh, with you guys. It's been great, isn't it? And, and all... top five for me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've had all the... John supported Alan Carr on tour. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the Edinburgh Festival. If you've never been to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, by the way, uh, you should go. That's absolutely fantastic. It's one of the... It's probably the highlight. What are we looking forward to in 2007? What about you guys? <sighs> Christmas. Well, I'm hoping that my dictator top trumps do all right, because uh, they've taken a beating this they year. Have. We've I'm lost a lot this year. We've lost a Pinochet. I was gutted. He was, he was a dark horse Pinochet. Slobberdan's gone. Oh, you've probably forgotten about that by now. I haven't. And then, last minute, they slip in Saddam. <laughs> Nothing. No wonder he hung himself. He had an evil rating of six. It's yeah. just... <laughs> there probably is a dictator top trumps, isn't there? Yeah. I, I think we can find it or make it. <laughs> exactly. The, the worst, uh, well, not the worst, but one of the most depressing deaths was Steve Irwin. That was horrible, wasn't it? And uh, Jermaine Greer, we were talking about Jermaine Greer earlier. She had a go at Kylie Minogue uh, in the uh, Independent the other day, just saying that, you know, it was a really horrible, really horrid kind of thing about her being really boring, Kylie's dull, and, you know. And then the end was, oh, she's probably not over the worst of the cancer. She's a vile lady, Jermaine Greer. But also, it was really interesting, because when Steve Irwin died, she wrote something in The Guardian that said, finally, the animal kingdom has taken its revenge on Irwin. And you find yourself going, how great would it be if she tripped over her own tits? <laughs> you know, so that she, you can write into The Guardian, finally, the brass taking his revenge on that evil old lady. But 2007, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, doing my tour, which starts uh, February uh, through to March. And impending court action from Jermaine Greer. Yeah, bring that Kicking on. Kicking off in about March. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, it, it, well, I'll meet her in her homeland, because then I'm going to uh, Melbourne to do the comedy festival. That's one of the main things I'm looking forward to. What about you? 2007? I yeah. think it'll be my girlfriend kicking your ass. But apart from Look that... Look forward to it. Look forward to it. Yeah, you think so. You yeah. think so. So, you, so your girlfriend's going to fight me. Jermaine Greer is going to fight me. John, what's going to be your highlight 2007? What are you looking forward to, mate? Kicking you after you've been kicked to death by two girls. <laughs> Lovely stuff. <laughs> well, uh, have a fantastic New Year's Eve. That's uh, the end of the show. Um, I've had loads of fun. Hope you have too. Um, have a great day. Have a fantastic evening and enjoy the new year. It's been a pleasure doing this show and uh, roll on 2007. Thanks very much. BBC. Six Music.